The main character, named Chu Nan, was traveling on a high-speed train to his destination. He needed to find his bride, coming out of the station, he didn't know exactly how to look for her, it was hot outside, his teacher didn't really explain anything. The guy noted to himself that it was hotter here than in the Middle East. Chu Nan was a super agent of a mysterious organization, he carried out assignments all over the world. Once again he went on a combat mission to earn some money. He found some free time and decided to take a little break from battles. Suddenly he heard an urgent call on the radio, he answered immediately. The connection was poor, the guy thought that his master wanted to contact him, he asked him to speak louder. The guy heard on the radio that his fiancée was dying, to end the marriage, he had to go back, she promised to contact him later if possible. The connection was interrupted and the radio turned off, the main character realized that he would no longer be able to complete the current task. The main character had no choice but to go in search of a bride for divorce. The sun was shining very brightly and it was hot outside, the guy was walking down the street, it seemed to him that he was in the desert. Chu Nan was very tired, and the problem for him was that he did not know exactly where to go, he decided to ask. He approached a young boy on the street and grabbed him by the shoulder. The main character asked if the boy knew anything about Minchin University. The teenager was very scared, he broke free, screamed loudly and began to run away. When the boy ran, he shouted to the main character not to kill him, Chu Nan thought that he had met a madman. The main character thought to himself that people in our era are very indifferent, after all, he just wanted to ask for directions. A clear female voice came from the side, she asked him if he had come to work. The guy turned to her in surprise and asked if she was addressing him. The woman told the main character that she had a job, he replied that he was not interested. The interlocutor was surprised and told him to forget about her proposal. Chu Nan came to his senses and shouted after the girl to stop, he agreed and asked how much she was paying. The guy thought to himself that he needed to earn money to buy clothes, only after this can he file for divorce. The girl assured him that the payment was completely worthy, she wanted to look at the guy's face, he was a little surprised. The girl took out paper napkins, with their help, she wanted to clean the guy's face. Gently, she began to wipe his face, he was forced to endure these weights. After some time, the girl completely cleared his face, for this she needed a lot of napkins. The guy without a hood and with a clean face looked young and attractive. His new friend was even surprised, she couldn't contain her emotions. The girl grabbed the guy and said that he not only had a handsome face, but also a toned body. The main character thought to himself how long she would paw him, the interlocutor said that he was really not bad. The girl called the guy handsome, she was glad that she found him before the scouts. The guy still didn't understand which scouts might be looking for him, the girl asked him to follow her, she promised to take him to her boss. They approached a large office building, there they were waiting for a meeting with the boss. The building had many equal offices, they approached the right room. A young and beautiful girl in an office suit was waiting for them there. There was a timid knock on her office door, she told the guests to come in. The girl entered along with the main character, she called the female boss by the name of Mingyu and added that she brought the person she had forgiven. The lady boss was drinking tea at this time, she studied Chu Nan with careful eyes. Chu Nan also looked attentively at the woman in the office, he noted to himself that she looked damn cute. The lady called her assistant's name Men Men and told her to come to her, the girl agreed. The lady boss said that although the guy is handsome, judging by his clothes, he is an ordinary immigrant, the girl told the boss not to demand the impossible from her, given the tight deadline, this is the most she could find. Mingyu said that she doesn't look down on the guy, but she is afraid that he might cause problems for them, Maing Miyang asked her boss if she still thought that her subordinate could find an educated person, then she asked the boss if she wanted her identity to be known. Men Men added that the guy looks like an ordinary simpleton, after finishing his work, they will give him some money and send him to hell. The boss agreed with her subordinate's arguments, she was very happy about this. Men Men turned to the guy and said joyfully that it was time to start. The main character stood and was silent, he was surprised, everything that happened was a surprise. Men Men pointed to her boss and told the guy that from this day on this beauty would be his girlfriend. The guy was very surprised, he didn't answer, he could not imagine such work. Chu Nan looked at the boss lady and thought about how she would actually be his girlfriend. Chu Nan was greatly shocked by what he heard, he asked Meng Meng again if it was true that Ming Yu would be his girlfriend. Then Men Men told him not to delude himself too much, she added that Ming Yu would be his fake girlfriend. 
The girl said that the main character will be a call guy, he will have to come at the right time to the right place, nothing else will be required of him, for each meeting he will receive a payment of 10,000 yuan. The guy said modestly that he agreed, he is completely satisfied with the payment. I was wary, she couldn't understand why the guy agreed so easily, this became suspicious for her. The guy added that there was no point in doubting, he had no choice. The girl said confidently that she did not doubt the guy at all. Ming Yu looked at the main character for a long time, and then said that he was really good. Chu Nan was silent, he looked at his future pseudo-girlfriend, he noted to himself that she was a cutie. Men men told the guy that he can do whatever he wants when he is not called. He agreed and asked to be paid in advance, he even turned out his pockets and showed that he had nothing. Then the girl turned to Ming Yu and called her sister, she added that the main character is poor, if she had not found him in time, he would have already died of starvation. The boss thought about it and told the girl to take the guy's personal information. Men men asked the main character to give him an identification card, he replied that he did not have one, in return, he continued to give a passport. The girl was happy when she saw the guy's documents, she was especially amused by his name. The guy didn't like this remark, he immediately shouted to his interlocutor. The girl said that the passport would be fine, she added that few places would hire him without an identification card, she asked the guy if he was a laborer, she had heard that there were many of these in the countryside. Men men said goodbye to the guy and said that the phone works around the clock, it was necessary that he not be afraid to spend the balance, she will replenish the account if it runs out of money. The guy shouted after her, he asked her to wait for him, he still had an important question. Chu Nan asked the girl what she knew about Mingqin University. Men Li was very wary, she asked the guy how he knew about this university. The main character clarified whether this university is somehow secret, he added that he needed to find one person. Men Men fell silent, she was thinking about whether to help her guy in his search. The girl asked the main character whether to call a car for him, he clarified why to do this. After a short period of time, they were already rushing in a car to the desired address, they stopped near the building. The driver said they were stopping at the back of the university, the guy said he understood. The guy got out of the car, he was glad that he managed to get to the place he needed. The main character was glad that he could finally find his bride. Then he saw a group of hooligans attack a young girl, they demanded that she give them cash. The guy carefully watched what was happening, he didn't know what to do. The girl took money out of her bag and told one of the hooligans that this was all she had. She added very fearfully, turning to the hooligans, that she wanted to leave. The main bully was unhappy, he told the girl that she must have something more valuable. The main character asked the bully whether he was an idiot or a madman, why rob a poor person, if a bully wants to rob someone, then let him find someone who looks rich. The girl was unpleasantly surprised, she noted to herself that the guy not only did not want to help her, but also called her poor, she was surprised that Chu Nan even gave recommendations to the bully on how to rob. The bully was very angry, he didn't like the protagonist's interference, he turned to Chu Nan and asked him if he was looking for death. Then one of the hooligans turned to the boss, he named him Xiao Mao, he said that they could no longer do business here and asked when Yu Liang would return from America. Another one of the bullies timidly said that if they mess up, Yu Liang will grind them into powder. The boss told them sharply and rudely not to panic, he promised to kill anyone who interfered with them. The hooligan chief remembered Chu Nan, he asked the main character if he considered himself a hero after he saved the girl. The hooligan suddenly and in a whole group rushed at the guy, they wanted to kill him. Chu Nan gave a worthy rebuff to the attackers, from his blow they scattered to the sides. The rescued girl was amazed, she was surprised that the defeated hooligans flew into the sky. The guy, as if nothing had happened, called the attackers weaklings, he didn't even have to strain to defeat them. The main character said that he didn't even warm up, the beaten hooligans lay and wailed on the ground. The girl smiled joyfully and thanked the guy for saving her from the attackers. Chu Nan was a little embarrassed, he calmly answered the girl that it was nothing for him to help her. Here the main character asked the girl if she knew who the most beautiful girl at the university was. After a short pause, the girl asked him if he did it on purpose. The main character was discouraged. He didn't understand what she wanted to accuse him of, the girl thought to herself how a guy can kick people several meters into the air and not be in a movie. Here she said accusingly to the main character what she thought, the hooligans complied with his request to make him look like a prince on a white horse. She ended up calling him a vile bandit, the guy was so surprised that he didn't know what to tell her. 
The girl turned around and began to leave, the main character did not know exactly what to answer her. Chu Nan still could not understand what was happening, he repeated to himself that everything that happened to him was nonsense. Then he felt someone put a hand on his shoulder and called. The main character became wary, he remembered that he didn't know anyone in this city, Chu Nan decided to neutralize the stranger who approached him from behind. The main character wrapped the stranger's hand behind his back, he asked that he not kill him and called himself a law-abiding citizen. The main character asked with excitement and suspicion why he called him. The guy who came up said joyfully that he decided that Chu Nan had come from another university to find a local beauty here. The stranger called himself Ma Chao, he said he could help the guy with any information, he even promised a discount to the main character for being quite handsome, in the end, he added that he knew everything about the beauties of this university. The main character simply asked who is the most beautiful girl in this place. Ma Chao replied that everyone knows the answer to the guy's question, therefore, he will not charge him, he also asked Chu Nan for help in one matter. The main character was ready for anything, therefore, he said that he was ready to listen to the request of his new acquaintance. Ma Chao began to happily say that there were only four beauties at the university. The main character recently met one of them, her name is Lin Suz Lo, she is an excellent student in the English department at the university, she never had a boyfriend. Next on the list of beauties is Tao, this student's nickname is the Little Wicked Witch. The guy added that there are two more beauties at the university, but little is known about them. The main character asked clearly which of these students is the best. Ma Chao answered specifically that they are all wonderful and cannot be compared. Then a new acquaintance told the main character that he needed help carrying things, the guy said to himself reproachfully how he could get involved in all this. The main character and Ma Chao walked up to a pile of food boxes in a truck, the guy asked him if all this food belonged to him, and what will he do with it. The new acquaintance said that he just decided to open a small stall, he calculated that they could carry everything in ten walks. Chu Nan said that all this would take a very long time, he pulled the tarpaulin off the car. The main character laid a tarpaulin on the ground and began placing boxes of food on top, his new friend said that he would not be able to hold everything on the fabric, as it would tear. Here Chu Nan tensed up and wrapped all the boxes in a tarpaulin, he lifted this load over his head. The guy quickly ran with a heavy load, Ma Chao was very shocked. At the same time, at the other end of the city, their main leader named Chen Shao came to the beaten hooligans. The boss called his subordinates a bunch of scum and told them to get out. He found out about everything that happened, Chen Shao said that he did not know what kind of guy beat up his subordinates, but he promised that he would pay for it. At this time, Chu Nan was carrying his heavy load to his destination at high speed, his new acquaintance shouted to him to wait for him. He shouted after the main character that he could fight with the crowd and carry big things, in his opinion, the guy trained a lot, Chu Nan said that this is called professional cargo transportation. Here the main character brought a heavy bag with a load and laid it on the ground. The guy simply answered his new acquaintance that he did everything he asked him to do, he couldn't believe his eyes. Ma Chao called the main character a wizard, he offered to cooperate and split the profits in half. The guy agreed, in his opinion, the work was dusty, and the extra money would not hurt him. Ma Chao told the main character that such work would help him pick up girls, he clarified that many beauties will be shopping tonight. Ma Chao described in detail and vividly that beautiful girls in miniskirts and long legs would come. Here Ma Chao decided to tell what, in his opinion, is the most important in the girl's body. Chu Nan spread his hands and said that the most important part of a woman's beauty is her huge breasts and thin waist. Only now the guy noticed that he accidentally touched with his hand the breast of the girl whom he had saved from hooligans that day. The girl got angry, it was unpleasant for her to see the main character again, and even in such a situation. She called Chu Nan a pervert and slapped him in the face with all her might. Chu Nan felt shame and resentment, he seemed to still feel the marks of the slap on his face. He could not understand the girl's behavior, he saved her, and in return she slapped him in the face, Ma Chao advised the guy to relax, he added that a girl's slap could turn into a blessing. Ma Chao said that he spoke with the chief director, now the main character can sleep in a warehouse with goods, the guy thanked him for this. Chu Nan clearly heard the phone ringing in his back pocket. Men Men called him, she said there was a task for him, the guy should come tomorrow at 10 o'clock without delay. Then she said goodbye to him and the telephone connection turned off at the end. At the appointed time, Chu Nan arrived for the meeting, this was the city center. Men Men immediately saw him and called him over, 
he approached her. The girl took him with her and said that they needed to go quickly, as they were late for shopping. The guy was surprised, he couldn't understand what kind of shopping and why they would go. My young Mayan said that the main character should accompany them to the banquet tonight, he can't go there in his clothes, so they go shopping. They opened the door to the store and the bell rang, they were greeted by a bright and made-up salesman. The girl called him Flower and said that they had arrived, the seller was a little surprised. They came close to the seller, the girl turned to him and said that today he would have to dress the main character in full. The flower looked at Chu Nan for a very long time, he called it hot. The seller said sensually that when he looks at the guy, he feels that his inspiration will burst out, the main character was unpleasantly surprised. Little time has passed, the flower said that he dressed the guy in the style of hot and dangerous summer rose. Then he opened the screen, the dressed up protagonist came out from there. Chu Nan was wearing a bright crimson jacket and black trousers, he held a rose in his hand. Men men did not like this style, she said something more refreshing would be needed. The flower was unpleasantly surprised, he decided to go for a different style and said it was okay if a girl wanted something refreshing. After a short time, the seller said that he had dressed the main character according to the theme of refreshingly gentle boy, the flower opened the screen and told the main character to come out. Chu Nan looked like a model student with glasses, a tie and a uniform. My young Mayan said that the guy's appearance makes her sweat, she can't go to a party with him like this. Time went on and on, the flower realized that they were going to a party, so he ordered the guy to change clothes once again. Next, the seller selected clothes with the girl's consent, she didn't like one of the following outfits, she said it was too naked and a guy wouldn't be allowed to wear it, she also ditched several other outfits. Ming Yu was waiting for Meng Meng and Chu Nan at the party, she couldn't understand where they had gone. An acquaintance approached her, he asked her what happened and said that she was absent-minded. An acquaintance told the girl that he had a very good view of the moon in his garden and invited her to take a walk. Then the main character came up and grabbed a girl he knew by the hand. Chu Nan strictly demanded that the stranger remove his hand from his girlfriend. Min Yu was extremely happy that the main character had finally arrived. Chu Nan said confidently that he was busy with company affairs, the girl said that everything doesn't matter, because he's finally here. An acquaintance told her that he had no idea that she had a boyfriend, he clarified why she didn't talk about him. The girl said that her boyfriend always conducts business abroad and rarely comes home, that's why she didn't talk about him. Then Ming Yu's acquaintance approached the main character and said a couple of offensive phrases to him in English, the guy showed by his appearance that he absolutely did not understand him. An acquaintance asked if Chu Nan didn't know English, if he does not understand such simple sentences, then how can he do business with foreign companies, he added that he asked the main character where he lives and what business his family is involved in. Ming Yu was surprised and annoyed, she understood that her boyfriend would not be able to answer. Chu Nan apologized to his interlocutor in clear English for not understanding him right away, as his words sounded a little unusual, he further said that his corporation controls markets and provides logistics and delivery services. Then Ming Yu's acquaintance said that he studied English abroad, Therefore, it is normal that the main character might not understand him. Chu Nan showed feigned surprise, he suggested that he speak Chinese. The host came on stage and greeted everyone, those present turned to him. The presenter thanked the people who passed by for giving him and the Tao family a chance, he thanked people for attending his cocktail party despite their busy business schedules. The presenter's name was Tao Duo Duo, he said that a group of investors from Europe would soon arrive to invest and research. He clarified that the project is very profitable, he also expressed the hope that all the people who came will do everything possible to join the cause, this will be a win for Minqing's business community. One of the guests told Ming Yu's acquaintance that it was not only the Tao family that had an advantage, others can have it too. The guest continued that Tao's mannerisms and speech were very similar to his mother's, Tao didn't come to the party. An acquaintance of Ming Yu said that there are many strange people in the Tao family, at the same time, Tao himself presents himself as a representative of the younger generation of business. Then the acquaintance told his interlocutor that they did not need to talk about Tao Duo Duo, he pointed him to Chu Nan next to Ming Yu. The interlocutor's name was Chen Yong Ming, he was one of the four princes, he was surprised that the main character turned out to be so familiar to men men. Ming Yu's acquaintance was called Xiao Xiyu, he was one of the four princes, Xiao said that Chu Nan is Ming Yu's boyfriend but he also has a good and close relationship with men men. Chen Yongming was outraged that the main character wanted to take his woman, 
he promised to break Chu Nan's head. At the same time, Men Men communicated in a friendly manner with the main character, she was surprised that he could speak English, the guy answered her that he could only say a couple of sentences. Chen Yongming came over, he greeted Men Men, the girl was surprised by his arrival. The girl asked Chen Yongming irritably what he wanted from her now. The guy said that he came to the girl to say hello and brought a gift. Men Men was surprised because he gave her a credit card from his store, she remembered that she had not used the previous one yet. In the end, the girl smiled and thanked Chen Yongming for his gift. She immediately gave the card to Chu Nan who came up, he was pleasantly surprised and thanked her. Chen Yongming looked at the guy with anger, in his head he called him a bastard. Chen Yongming introduced himself to the guy, he said he runs a chain of stores, he inquired about the name of the main character. Immediately afterwards they shook hands, this served as confirmation of their acquaintance. The main character said his name and said that he wants to manage a chain of developing stores in Mingcheng. Chen Yongming was surprised that his interlocutor had just arrived abroad and was already ready to open his own store chain in the city. Chu Nan replied cheerfully that his family owned a business in the Middle East, he said to himself that he was a bodyguard and owned a weapons business. Chen Yongming became even more suspicious, he realized that if the main character worked with weapons, then his past was definitely not simple. During their conversation, they still held each other's hands, all their attention was absorbed in the conversation. Chen Yongming finally said, conciliatorily, for them to let go of their hands. Chu Nan said that he agreed to hold his interlocutor's hand a little longer, because he thought that Chen Yongming adores handshakes. Then Ming Yu's acquaintance approached, he decided to defuse the situation, he said that brother Chu is a big enthusiast and two grown men can make him laugh. Ming Yu came over, an acquaintance of hers told her that if she made peace, then great success would be possible regarding foreign investment. Ming Yu said that she is not deciding anything this time, for any cooperation, she needs to talk to her father. Her friend replied that everything was fine, he promised to talk to Uncle Kai tomorrow, he asked the girl to walk with him. Chu Nan said that Ming Yu promised to take him on a date tomorrow, the girl immediately confirmed this. An acquaintance said that he had just returned from abroad and a lot had happened in his city, he suggested that all three of them meet Uncle Kai and then visit Mingchen, he thought to himself that if the main character was Ming Yu's real boyfriend, then he should have met the older people as well. Then the acquaintance asked the interlocutors whether it could be that Uncle Kai did not agree with both of them. Late in the evening the main character and his companions went home. For a long time they drove in silence, all three of them in the car. Meng Meng told Chu Nan not to talk nonsense next time, he could have said at a party tonight that he was an arms dealer, the girl added that if he brags a lot, he won't be able to turn back in time. Meng Meng asked Ming Yu what they would do tomorrow, the girl remained silent. Wary, Meng Men asked if Ming Yu was going to take Chu Nan with him to his uncle. The main character shouted to them to be careful, a racing car was chasing them from the side. Several black cars drove up to their car, and one of them hit them in the side. During the strike, the main character grabbed his companion with his hands to protect her. After the accident, someone quickly came and opened the door on their side of the car. A big guy looked in the door, he shouted loudly to someone in the direction that he had found Ming Yu. Then suddenly Men Men turned around from the driver's seat, she punched the big man hard in the face. The girl bravely jumped out of the car, she shouted to the attackers that if they want to steal Ming Yu, then they need to get past her first. Men Men managed to neutralize several of the attackers on her own, the rest of the bandits stood in the distance. The girl was strong and full of determination to continue the unequal battle. Next, Meng Men shouted to the main character to take Ming Yu away from here. The main character laughed and realized that it was his time to join the fight. Men Men was very surprised, she realized that the guy was ready to help her immediately. Chu Nan shouted that they did not need to run away, he wanted to deal with the bandits. The attackers were amused, they did not believe that there was some idiot who would fight them. Men Men shouted to the main character to hide, because he would not be able to defeat the attackers, the guy assured her that he could do it. The main character realized that he couldn't hesitate for a second, he rushed with all his might towards the hooligans. He shouted with determination while running that he never brags. The main character began to use his fighting skills to fight the attackers. Chu Nan was able to single-handedly neutralize all the bandits, they all scattered to the side. The beaten hooligans lay on the ground, 
they could no longer rise and only moaned. After the fight, the main character dusted off his hands and said confidently that everything was ready. His companions were surprised, they asked him where he learned to fight like that. The main character approached Men Men, he wanted to see how badly she was hurt. The guy asked the girl how badly she was hurt, she replied that it was only a small scratch and it would heal in a couple of days. The chief edge took out medicine from his pocket and said that this ointment will help restore bones. The girl agreed for the guy to help her, Chu Nan carefully applied ointment to her hand. The main character warned the girl that the ointment burns a little when rubbed on it, he asked if she was okay. Men Men assured him in response that she was fine, let him continue to smear. Chu Nan happily continued, his ointment was supposed to help the girl recover from the beating. The next day, the main character and his girlfriend arrived at her father's office, he was in a large skyscraper. The girl's father looked at the guests and then decided to ask her a couple of personal questions. Her father's name was Kai Yi Chen, he asked the girl sternly if it was true that she had a boyfriend. Ming Yu responded positively, she said she came with her boyfriend today, Chu Nan greeted his uncle. Kai Yi Chen became angry and slammed his fist on the table with all his might, he expressed obvious displeasure. Ming Yu was confused, she couldn't understand her father's harsh reaction. Her father asked her sternly why she had not told him about such an important thing before. Here Ming Yu's acquaintance intervened in the conversation, he thought that the uncle already knew about the girl's boyfriend. The main character did not like the intervention of a friend, he thought that this bastard was ruining everything here. Uncle calmed down a little, cheered up, laughed and said that everything was very good. The sudden change in uncle's mood greatly surprised everyone who came, they were stunned and silent. In a completely calm voice, the uncle turned to the main character and said that Chu Nan is a good name. The main character wondered why his uncle was so vague, at the same time, the uncle invited them to his hall. They sat down on comfortable chairs in the hall, the uncle asked them about what matters they would like to talk to him about. An acquaintance of Ming Yu named Xiao Xiyu said that they agreed to meet, they visited Uncle Tsai today, he will help them learn about the European Investment Group. Uncle Kai said that this European business group is very important and should be taken seriously. Xiao Xiyu said that if a European business group arrived, Chu Nan's family could help them since his family was overseas. Uncle was a little surprised, he clarified what kind of business Chu Nan's family is engaged in and where they currently live. The main character wanted to answer, but he was interrupted by his acquaintance Mi Shui, Xiao Xiyu said that he wanted to make a small retreat, he added that Chu Nan has a very strong background. Xiao Xiyu continued to say that the Chu Nan family is not only engaged in selling bodyguards in the Middle East, they also offer bodyguard services to a number of wealthy businessmen. Xiao Xiyu said that this is a huge profit, he decided to himself that the Tsai family was engaged in serious business and they would never accept the leader of the bodyguard organization. My uncle said that this kind of business is very good. The uncle began to say that his family mining business had been wanting to go to the Middle East to get into the oil business for a very long time, he pointed out that in our age oil is equal to gold. Xiao Xiyu replied that the oil business is profitable, but it is very risky, and in the Middle East there is always chaos, he said that if Uncle Tsai bought an oil field there, local militants or warlords might take it away, he thought to himself why his uncle needed to go to the Middle East if he already had a good business. The girl's father said that Chu Nan was inviting him to do business there, the main character confirmed this and told his uncle that he was welcome, Xiao Xiu continued to think about the old man's words, he decided that his uncle was a serious businessman who was studying various activities. Ming Yu thought that her father most likely guessed about her relationship with Chu Nan, she liked her father's praise for Chu Nan. Negotiations between Uncle Tsai and his guests continued for a long time. At one moment, he was attracted by Xiao Xiu's words, he even asked what he said. Xiao suggested using a number of methods to frighten foreign people if they refused to cooperate. The uncle said that such a proposal was not suitable, Xiao Xiu said that there is nothing inappropriate, he used to take inspiration from his uncle's words, Xiao further said that uncle wants to go to the Middle East for oil business, but he is afraid that field commanders might seize his business, if terrorists can capture them like that then they can do it too. Uncle Tsai thought to himself that his interlocutor was talking nonsense about a threat to business, 
he also did not believe that Xiao Shiyu received inspiration from him. Xiao asked his uncle what he thought of his approach, old man Sai replied that he would think about it later. The main character thought to himself that Sao is a fool in reality. After the meeting ended, they left Uncle Kai in the office and went outside themselves. As they stood near the skyscraper, a bus drove up to them, some guy called for them to come over. When they arrived at the bus, they found out that it was Chin Yuming, they asked why he was here, he asked permission to join the fun, he said they would be able to enjoy the scenery today. Chen Yuming looked at the protagonist with great anger, he thought that he wanted him to really disgrace himself this time. The main character could not understand why Chen Yuming looked at him with such a forced gaze. Ming Yu didn't want to go on the bus, she invited everyone to get into the car. Chen Yuming asked the girl with irritation why she didn't want to go with him on his bus. Men men said that they would go through a tunnel to get to the zoo, his bus won't be able to get through there. The guy slyly suggested that everyone get into his car together and drive in it. Finally, Men Men said that there was not enough space in the car for a large number of people, she will still need to change her clothes a little later. Everyone got into the car and the car started moving, Chen Yuming shouted angrily after them, Wai Chu Nan sat down with them. Chen Yuming was very angry, he continued to stare after the car that drove away. He didn't notice the police driving up behind him, and they handed him a fine, Chen Yuming was outraged by this. Xiao Shiyu watched everything that happened silently, the police said you can't park in that area, they demanded that Chen Yuming remove his vehicle immediately, the policeman asked if the guy would leave now on his bus, he categorically refused. The police were forced to take the bus to the impound lot using a tow truck. The main character and his companions were driving across the bridge in their car. Men men complained that they were constantly being pursued by her acquaintance, this irritated her very much. The main character noticed that a black car was following them, he was approaching very quickly. Then, somewhere behind them, an SUV began to approach them, this SUV could hit the car with Chu Nan. The main character realized that he needed to immediately make a maneuver to avoid an accident. Chu Nan sharply turned the steering wheel to the side, as a result, the black car crashed into the SUV at full speed. Men men said with fear that the same people who attacked them yesterday might be in the SUV, the main character told them to stay in the car, he wanted to go and check. Chen Yuming and Xiao Shiyu were in the black car, they angrily approached the SUV. Chen Yuming began to angrily shout for people to get out of the SUV, he promised to beat the crap out of them. The driver and passengers of the SUV turned out to be pumped up bruisers, they didn't like Chen Yuman's shout. One of the big men approached Chen Yuman and asked him what he said. Then the big man hit Chen Yuming in the face with all his might, the guy almost fell to the ground. At the same time, another big man hit Xiao Xiu, he, too, almost fell unconscious. Chu Nan approached them, he urged them to stop fighting in a completely peaceful and friendly manner. The main character called on the big guys to focus on peace and harmony, he suggested that they come to an amicable agreement, one of the big guys sternly asked who Chu Nan thought he was, he demanded that the main character mind his own damn business. The big guys started shouting for Chu Nan to get out quickly, they threatened to make a chop out of him. The main character coped with the big guys from the SUV without any problems, he beat them until they lost consciousness. Chu Nan, after the massacre of the big men, approached the beaten guys, he asked if they were okay. After this, the main character approached his companions, they asked him if everything was okay with him, the guy answered them that for him everything was as simple as shelling pears, Chen Yuming did not like this outcome, he told Xiao that they had made a mistake today. Xiao Xiu replied that they must find a way to atone for their guilt. He immediately took out his smartphone and made a call, he needed help now. Xiao Xiu reached a caller named Lil Yang, he said that he was in a picturesque area near the zoo, he demanded that his interlocutor send several people here. A little time passed and several cars arrived at the parking space. Two black cars stopped next to the car where Chu Nan and his companions were. Xiao Xiu said overjoyed that the person he had previously contacted had arrived, he added that it was time to put on a show and regain some respect. He thought to himself that this time he would be able to make Ming Yu fall in love with him. Ming Yu thought that it was probably the same drunks who arrived in the cars, she and Men Men were sitting in the car at that time. Xiao Xiu and Chen Yuming rushed to the arriving car, they shouted loudly that this time they would not spare the attackers. At the same time, Chen Yuming received an unexpectedly strong blow to the head with a bat. Xiao Xiu shouted in fear to the attackers that there was no need for this, 
he realized with fear that it was not his mercenaries who had arrived. At the same moment, someone hit Xiao Shiyu with a bat with all his might, he fell to the ground. Next to him lay his battered smartphone, a message appeared in the messenger, he was warned that the people he had called were stuck in traffic, for this reason, they will arrive a little later. Then the car with the main character was gradually surrounded by armed people, the main one said that Mist Tsai was able to escape yesterday. The chief pointed the gun in the direction of the car, he was serious. He added sternly that he would not have such a chance again, he came close to the car. The girls were very scared, men men screamed in fear that the attackers had gone crazy. Ming Shui said fearfully that she was worried about his father's business. The door opened and they heard a guy's sharp and retreating cry. The girls saw Chu Nan running away, he was screaming heartrendingly that he didn't want to die. Min Min told her companion that they had chosen the wrong person, she replied that there was nothing to blame the main character. Then a pistol shot rang out, the bullet flew near the girls and broke through the glass. The boss said menacingly that they didn't have time for this, he demanded that Miss Tsai come with him. The girl realized that she had no choice, she asked the attackers not to touch Men Men. Meng Men shouted to Ming Yu that she shouldn't, the girl replied that she couldn't drag Min Min into this. She grabbed the door handle, Ming Yu understood that she could not escape, she felt weak and defenseless. For some reason she imagined herself as a little girl near the TV next to her toys. She was watching a fairy tale on TV, there the prince saved the princess and told her not to worry. The audience liked it, she called the prince handsome, she said that when she grows up, she will also have her own prince, who will save her in case of danger. Mingyu got out of her car and slowly walked towards the black car that was waiting for her. The chief was investigating her with a gun, at the door, he told her to get into the car. Quite unexpectedly, someone attacked the chief from behind and knocked the weapon out of his hands. At this time, Chu Nan appeared, he threw the boss to the ground and started beating him. Mingyu was very surprised to see the main character, all she could say was his name, the guy told her not to worry. The main character grabbed Ming Yu and confirmed that he was here, the girl realized that she was saved. Chu Nan, looking at the tied up bandits, asked whether it was better to kill them or call the cops. Men Men asked him in fear if he had watched the films if he wanted to kill them. Then the beaten Xiao Shiyu and Chen Yuming came to their senses, Xiao Shiyu said that he had never seen the attackers before and asked if his companion was okay, Chen Yuming replied that he was fine and even saw how scared one of the attackers was. Men Men asked her companion if it was time for them to go to the show, Xiao Shiyu and Chen Yuming stood up with difficulty and prepared to leave with the girls. Ming Yu said that they would go, but only so as not to arouse suspicion among others. The whole group came to the pavilion, the planned show was supposed to take place there. Xiao Shiyu and Chen Yuming took their places in the hall next to the girls. The performance has begun, the host of the show went on stage and told the audience that for the first number he would need the most beautiful girl in the hall. Xiao Shiyu kept telling the girl about the previous fight, he wanted to assure her that if he had shown all of himself to the hooligans, they would have had no chance, he wasn't ready to be hit first. Chen Yuming added on his own that if the attacker had not used dirty tricks, they would have swept them away, men men told them to shut up and that they would watch the show. The host of the show said that they will look for the contestant using a spotlight. The beam aimed at Mingyu, the presenter shouted that the spotlights showed true beauty. The presenter looked carefully and intently at the girl and told her to go on stage. Mingyu agreed, the guy next to her didn't want to let her go, he said they weren't finished yet. Mingyu answered him cheerfully that she had a rare opportunity to witness magic live. The girl walked across the stage towards the presenter, there was a chair nearby, he said this performance would be excellent. The presenter told the girl to sit down on this chair, the girl agreed. The presenter told the seated girl to look straight at the audience and not blink. After a moment, the presenter threw a red blanket over her. Now the presenter addressed the audience, he said that he would begin to sow the seed of magic, he will pick up this cloth after counting to three. The whole hall froze in anticipation, the audience held their breath, at this time, the presenter counted to the number two. Men Men was eating popcorn at the same time, she and the presenter grunted three. At the same moment, the presenter pulled off the cover, spectators noticed that the girl was no longer there. Instead of the girl, predatory hissing snakes began to crawl from the chair in all directions. The spectators were shocked, they began to run away in all directions in great panic and scream. One of the spectators shouted for everyone to run away quickly, there was complete panic all around. The main character was the most excited, 
he stood completely alone in a sea of people running away in different directions. The guy rushed onto the stage, he was looking for a girl, there were almost no people around anymore. Chu Nan ran up and threw the snake off the chair, he realized that the girl had disappeared somewhere here. Moving the chair to the side, the guy noticed that there was a camouflaged hatch in the floor nearby. The main character began to knock on the hatch, he kept thinking about how to get inside. Chu Nan opened the hatch and looked inside, from below he heard a girl scream. The guy jumped down, he noticed how the show host grabbed the girl, she demanded that he let her go. The girl was happy to see Chu Nan, the guy asked the presenter menacingly what he wanted to do. The presenter smiled slyly and said that everything was not as they understood, he just wanted to get this woman out of here. This answer surprised the guy a little, he just asked if it was true. Suddenly the presenter jumped to the side and went out through the secret door, he said he was leaving and said goodbye to the guy and Mingyu. A hatch opened at the top and Men Men looked in, she was surprised to find this way out. Men Men said that she was very surprised how the guy was able to find this way out, she clarified whether he was previously an actor or an illusionist. Chu Nan said in a joking and serious tone at the same time that he was in reality the head of an international criminal organization, for him, acting is just a part-time job, Men Men asked him if he really thought that she would believe him. Chu Nan answered the girl that absolutely nothing bad would happen if she didn't believe. Ming Yu stood in complete silence, deep down, she began to suspect something. Chu Nan went outside with the girl, there they were met by Xiao Xiyu and Chen Yuming, immediately, Xiao Xiyu was glad that Ming Yu was free, he said that he had been looking for her for a very long time. Xiao Xiyu continued to question the girl, he asked if she was okay, the guy said that there were a lot of people on the street and they simply pushed them out of the hall. Ming Yu looked tired, she said everything made her dizzy, she invited everyone to disperse. The girl left with Chu Nan, Xiao Xiyu just looked after them sadly. At the same time, an illusionist from the show was watching them, he called his boss and said he had screwed up again, he explained his failure by saying that there were always a lot of people around the girl. The boss angrily told him that he couldn't even catch a girl, he wanted to hit his subordinate. The illusionist called his boss Ri Xiao and added that it would not be easy to catch the girl safe, he asked if he could just kill her. The boss slammed his hand on the table in anger, he was annoyed by his subordinate. He called his subordinate a bastard and said that he wanted to kidnap the girl for a while and then release her again. At the end, the boss said that he was still giving the illusionist time, if he fails, he will kill him. At the same time, the main character, together with his companions, was leaving by car. They raced in a car as far as possible from this place, once again they escaped mortal danger. Meng Meng turned to Ming Yu and asked her if she was okay, the girl was still scared. Having collected her thoughts a little, Ming Yu replied that she was fine, she's just a little tired. Chu Nan told the girl that if she was hungry, he had something for her. The guy took out several packages of regular food with shrimp from the glove compartment. Meng Meng asked him how he could offer Ming Yu such cheap food. The main character answered simply that if she doesn't want to, then she can simply not eat. Then they arrived at the house where Ming Yu lived, they got out of the car and approached the mansion. Ming Yu told the guy that he could use the car as he wanted, at his own discretion. The guy was very happy, he thanked the girl for the great trust she placed in him. Ming Yu turned to the guy and thanked him for today. The main character decided to return home, a friend with work was waiting for him there. The friend was glad that Chu Nan had returned, he told him that things were already up to his neck, he held several packages in his hands. He gave these packages to the guy and said that these were all the orders that needed to be delivered, Chu Nan wondered if this needed to be done so urgently. The friend told the main character that the pink package needs to be delivered first, it must be taken to the third women's toilet on the second floor of the lecture hall at the university. The guy said there was no way he could get into the women's restroom on his own. The friend told the main character that the bell had just rung and there was definitely no one in the toilet. He once again hurried the main character and said that all this was very urgent. The guy went up to the right floor, and there was a girl in the shower at that time. At that very time she was calmly washing herself and water was dripping from her everywhere. The girl was completely herself, in the shower, she did not suspect that anyone was nearby. At this time, she did not suspect anything and was thinking about something of her own while washing in the shower. Chu Nan asked loudly and clearly if there was anyone here, he said he brought sanitary napkins, he asked who ordered them. The guy asked again before entering if anyone was there, he confirmed that he had brought sanitary napkins that were needed here, 
these are sanitary napkins for use. The girl in the shower paid attention to the screams, she immediately turned off the water. The girl heard him and replied that there was no need to shout, she invited him to come in. The main character shook his head from side to side before entering, he didn't want anyone to see him. Having looked around again carefully, he quietly walked inside the women's toilet. The girl told the guy that she would open the door now and he could put the package in front of her, he agreed. The girl walked to the door and carefully opened it, she was ready to extend her hand to receive the package. Opening the door, she looked at the guy, it was Lin Shui, she was amazed to see the main character again. The guy did not notice what kind of girl was standing in front of him, he handed her the package, Lin Shui thought that this bandit had come to her again. The girl was scared, she wanted to close the door with all her might, she slammed the door on the guy's hands. As a result, Chu Nan dropped his bag straight into the trash can, he ended up underneath a pile of rubbish. Lin Shui was very surprised and confused, she angrily asked the guy what he had done. Looking into the trash can, she asked how she could use the napkins now. Chu Nan told her not to blame herself, if she hadn't abruptly closed the door, this wouldn't have happened. At the same time, Classes continued at the university and students sat in classrooms. At the same time that some were studying, other students were walking along the corridors. One of the local beauties was walking along the university corridor, she was interested in the sounds from the toilet. The beauty stopped, she was very surprised why a man's voice was in the women's toilet. She had just arrived and saw the conflict between Chu Nan and the girl from the shower room, the beauty heard all these words, she was surprised by what was happening. The beauty was surprised, she thought that it couldn't be that they were doing this in the toilet. The university beauty decided to quietly come in and see for herself. She carefully walked over and peeked around the corner, she saw the main character standing there. Chu Nan stood in front of the door and demanded that the girl inside open it for him, otherwise he threatened to use force. Lin Shui was scared inside, she didn't know what to do if someone came in, because of fear, she could not think adequately. The beauty came up and asked confidently that they had not finished yet and what they were doing there. The beauty came up, thought and said that they have such a fetish when a girl seduces from the toilet, she became interested. Chu Nan turned to the beauty and said that this is not what she thought, the girl was confused. Here the beauty came close to the main character, she called him handsome. The university beauty came to the door and said that she wanted to see who was inside. Looking inside, she was very surprised, she could not believe that Lin Shui was there. Immediately, Lin Shui wanted to justify herself, the university beauty said that she couldn't believe that Lin Shui had such a hobby, she called her a naughty girl. Chu Nan entered the conversation, he said he was just an ordinary courier, the beauty told him that he had a very unusual service for a courier. The beauty asked Lin Shui why she screamed so much, was it because of the good quality of service? Lin Shui was completely confused, she realized that she could not justify herself in any way. The girl quickly ran out of the booth, she called Chu Nan and the beauty scoundrels. The beauty was indignant, she didn't like that the running girl dared to push her. The main character once again said that he was just delivering napkins, the girl did not believe him once again. She looked slyly and said that she didn't believe him, Chu Nan finally realized that it was useless to explain anything to the girl. Then the beauty asked the guy to give her his phone number, perhaps she will need his services. Lin Shui was very upset about what happened to her in the university bathroom, she grieved in her dorm room. The girl was in tears and said that because of what happened yesterday, everyone was secretly talking about her, now she can't even look anyone in the eye. Her neighbor calmed her down and told the girl not to cry, she said that it was Tao who started the rumors about her at the bar, Lin Shui called her neighbor Yuan and said that she really didn't know Chu Nan. The neighbor said that if the guy called himself a courier, then why not ask him to explain everything, she said that most likely Chu Nan did not mean to annoy the girl. At the same time, the main character was having lunch in a small statement, he didn't like spicy noodles. Then suddenly a group of hooligans entered the restaurant, one of them asked the owner for a conversation. The owner came out and said that he had already paid for the protection last week. The bully said that after he ate at this eatery, he had a stomach ache, he had to visit three of the best hospitals, now, as punishment, the owner is obliged to pay his bills. The owner's wife said that this is impossible and they never cook with expired products. The main bully took the bench with all his might and threw it on the floor. The bully immediately demanded money, otherwise he threatened to destroy everything here. The owner spoke and said that they had already taken a lot of money from him, for this reason they would not give him anything more. 
The big guy approached the owner and said that he needed to be taught a lesson, he grabbed the owner by the collar. The owner's daughter came up, she screamed in fear for the hooligans to get away from her father. The father called his daughter Shwe and shouted at her not to interfere, the bully was still holding his owner by the collar. Then several hooligans approached the girl, they shouted to their father that if they had fun with her, they could ask him for the debt. The hooligans wanted to take the girl with them, the father shouted at them not to leave his daughter behind. The owner grabbed the axe in his hands, he was determined to defend himself at all costs from the bandits. The father swung his hand and was completely ready to kill one of the hooligans with an axe. Suddenly the main character came up, he thrust the money into the owner's hands. The guy stood in front of the owner and held money in his hands, even the conflict stopped for a while, the guy took the girl with his hand. Chu Nan said in a calm voice that he pays the money for a bowl of noodles with two pancakes. Such behavior of a guy in such a situation was unusual, the hooligans were even confused for a while. One of the big guys grabbed the main character and asked him if now was the right time to pay the bill. The guy didn't show any concern, he looked calmly at those around him as if nothing had happened. Chu Nan took out a toothpick and slowly began to use it, what was happening around him did not bother him at all. The main bully shouted menacingly that they would now beat the main character to death. Hooligans rushed at the guy from all sides, screaming, they were determined. The girl was scared, she shouted at the guy with caution to quickly dodge. Chu Nan waved his hand and began to confidently and professionally beat the bullies with all his might. The guy's blows sent the hooligans flying in all directions, he alone was able to confidently cope with them all. At the end of the fight, all the hooligans who came were lying on the ground unconscious, the owner and family were surprised. A policewoman observed all this, she stood aside silently and did not interfere in any way. At the end of the fight, she asked the main character sternly if he had arranged all this here, the guy had no idea that there was a policewoman next to him. In the end, it all ended with the main character being handcuffed and arrested. The policewoman told him to go with her, the guy was very amazed, he didn't even know what to say. The girl turned to the policewoman and said that she had misunderstood everything, she wanted to explain everything. The girl went with them to the police building, there she told in detail everything that happened. The police recorded that the main character was involved in the fight, but tried to help the girl, she thanked them for their understanding. The guy was released and he immediately fled the place, the girl turned around and was surprised where he had gone. She felt sad, she really wanted to thank the guy for saving her. At the same time, the main character was relaxing at home, the events of the past day had left him exhausted. Lying on the bed, he told himself that he was very tired, he spent the whole day delivering orders, students at university buy a lot of goods. The guy couldn't sleep, he was distracted by a phone call, he realized that Men Men was calling. Chu Nan picked up the phone and asked the girl if she wanted him to be a fake guy again. Men Men's voice was excited, she told the guy to come to Sister Min's house today, she added that something strange began to occur. The guy clarified what she was talking about, he had just gotten dressed and was getting ready to go out. The girl said that when she and Ming Shui were driving home, she noticed that they were being followed, she is afraid that Ming Shui might start to worry, Men Men assumes that they were being followed by the same people as yesterday. The girl said that her request had nothing to do with their agreement, therefore, she will understand if Chu Nan refuses to come. The guy said briefly and confidently that he was already in the car and would be there in half an hour. Ming Shui asked Meng Meng who she had just talked to on the phone, just at that time she cut a watermelon and invited her friend to eat. Meng Meng said soothingly that she invited Chu Nan to visit so that they could all have fun together. There was silence around the house where the girls lived, but the house was closely watched. Some man standing near the house said on the radio that there were only two girls inside. There was a car nearby, the bandits were sitting there, one of them asked the driver why they couldn't grab them right away, the driver replied that they needed to wait until they fell asleep, then they will begin to act. At the same time, the main character hid under the car, he heard all their conversations. The guy thought to himself that Men Men's intuition had not deceived him, these were the same people as yesterday, he couldn't understand who was behind this. Chu Nan began to quietly and carefully crawl out from under the car, he thought to himself that Xiao Su was nearby last time and for this reason he could not interrogate the bandits, but this time they won't be so lucky. At the same time, a girl was walking past the house, she was carrying a bag of groceries in her hands. She saw the main character carefully crawling out from under the car, this alarmed her. Lavushka did not understand why this man was hiding under the car, if this is training, 
then it is very strange. The guy decided that first of all he needed to get rid of the observer near the house. Chu Nan secretly approached the observer from behind, he suspected absolutely nothing. The main character hit the observer with his hand on the neck from behind with all his might, he fell unconscious. To prevent other bandits from raising the alarm, the guy dragged the lifeless body around the corner. Chu Nan completely searched the unconscious observer's pockets and clothes and found nothing there. The main character was so carried away that he did not notice the danger behind him, a girl from the street quietly approached him. She wanted to grab him sharply, but boy, if you dodge, he grabbed her hand and threw her to the ground. Then the guy looked at the girl's face, it seemed familiar to him, he definitely saw him not so long ago. I fight off the girl, he recognized her as the policewoman who had already detained him today. The girl did not give up, she kicked Chu Nan from behind with all her might, she wanted to detain him. As a result, the girl was able to neutralize the guy, she slammed his back against the wall of the building. The policewoman shouted to the guy that she had caught him, he could no longer resist. The girl grabbed him by the collar and called him a bandit, the main character was silent, everything was unexpected for him. The police officer grabbed the guy and told him sternly that he would go with her to the station. The main character thought that he was in a bad situation, he needed to remove it, the police were monitoring important parts of his body, he urgently needed to come up with something. Chu Nan realized that there was no time to think, he decided to make a diversion and run away. To scare the girl, he shouted with all his might and spread his arms to the sides. To shock the girl and distract her attention, he unexpectedly kissed her on the nose. The girl got angry and hit the guy in the face with all her might, this outcome pleased him, he realized that he had a chance. Having escaped from the police, the guy jumped up and climbed over the wall of the fence. The policewoman shouted after him to stay where he was, the guy quickly ran away. At the same time, the beaten observer woke up, he ran up to the car to his accomplices without clothes. The bandits in the car were surprised to see their accomplice naked, he shouted for them to fold up, he warned them that he had seen Chu Nan. At the same time, the doorbell rang in the house where the girls lived, they were still waiting for Chu Nan. Hearing the bell, Min Min rushed to the exit, she said she would open it. The main character was waiting for her at the door, he greeted the girl as if nothing had happened. Men Men told him joyfully that he had finally come, otherwise they had already waited too long. The girl pulled the guy with her into the next room, she said she would give him something. The door closed behind them, Ming Yu immediately approached suspiciously, she was very interested in everything that was happening. Men Men asked the guy in fear if he had seen the same group on the street as yesterday, the guy replied that the bandits fled when he found them, he heard them calling a man named Ri Xiao, he asked the girl if she knew this name. Men Men replied that it was difficult for her to remember, she asked the main character for a favor, she asked him to sleep here today, in case the bandits return. Chu Nan realized that he had no choice, he agreed with the girl's proposal. Meng Meng looked out of the room and told her friend that it was already late and Chu Nan would sleep with them today, Ming Yu was surprised, she said they don't have any other beds. Meng Meng said resourcefully that she would sleep with Ming Yu, in this case, the main character will sleep on Men Men's bed. It was already deep night, the guy went to the room that was specially allocated for him. Chu Nan saw a huge mess, there were various things and toys lying on the bed all over the room, he thought it would be difficult for him to sleep here. The guy sat in the lotus position and decided to relax, now was a good time to practice chi. The main character's mind calmed down and he disconnected from all thoughts and experiences. The guy felt as if a strong and invisible energy was passing through his body. Suddenly he heard a noise, it was a barely noticeable creak of the door, the guy became wary. Chu Nan realized that there was a slight noise on the first floor, apparently there is only one person there. The main character very quietly went down the stairs, he was ready that he would have to go into battle. Chu Nan noticed a figure in the darkness, he crept up and quietly grabbed the man's hand. The guy was very surprised, he saw Ming Yu next to him, she was also very surprised, Chu Nan asked what she was doing here, he already thought that a thief had broken into the house. The girl answered scared that she could not sleep, for this reason, she went down to drink water. The main character calmed down, he decided to leave, he wished the girl good night. Suddenly, Ming Yu grabbed the guy's hand, she shouted at him to wait. The guy couldn't understand what the girl wanted from him, he turned around and glanced at Ming Yu. Ming Yu said quietly that she couldn't sleep, 
she asked the guy to keep her company, she continued to hold his hand. The night continued over the city in darkness hung over the house where Ming Shui and her friend lived. The main character and the girl were sitting in chairs near the pool, they were silent and enjoying their vacation. Chu Nan said that the moon is especially bright today, Ming Shui agreed with him without any emotion. At this moment, the fantasy failed the main character, he couldn't find a good topic to talk about. The girl thanked him for coming today, she felt much calmer with him. Chu Nan told her that he was also glad that she felt more comfortable with him, he couldn't figure out how to continue the conversation. Gradually fatigue took its toll, the girl closed her eyes and dozed off, the events of the day had tired her. The main character looked at her and realized that the girl was deeply asleep, he decided to move it into the house. The guy carried the girl in his arms, he walked down the stairs with her, he knocked near the bedroom door, he asked through the door for men men to open it for him, there was no answer. The guy decided that if the door was not closed, he would go in himself, men men was sleeping on the bed at that time. The main character held Ming Yu in his arms, he looked at men men and noticed that she was sleeping very soundly. Chu Nan carefully placed Ming Yu on the bed, at this time, the girlfriend was lounging on the bed while sleeping. Then suddenly, half asleep, Men Men reached out her hand and grabbed the guy tightly by the collar. Chu Nan could not resist, he fell onto the bed, Men Men, in her sleepiness, confused him with her big, soft toy. Men Men completely wrapped her arms around the main character, in her sleep, she muttered and called Xiao Xiao. The guy couldn't understand what was happening, he wanted to leave, but could not free himself from the hug. The main character decided not to leave, he collapsed and fell asleep, Meng Meng and Ming Xiao were nearby. Chu Nan fell into a deep sleep, he decided not to return to his room so as not to wake the girls. The morning sun illuminated the entire area, the room became light, the whole trio was still fast asleep. Chu Nan was sleeping deeply near Meng Meng's chest, this night turned out to be a happy one for him, he felt this even in his sleep. Next to the main character lay and slept Ming Shui, she also hugged him. Chu Nan rested in complete harmony, through his sleep, he felt that he was soft and good. The awakening for him was very unexpected and unlike anything else, something hit him in the face with all his might. When the guy woke up, he saw Men Men, who asked him what he was doing in their bed. The main character said that everything that happened was a misunderstanding, he asked the girl to listen to him. At this morning time, someone approached the house on the street, the guest confidently approached the front door. It was Xiao Xiu, he rang the doorbell, she had a large bouquet of beautiful roses in her hands. The guy stood near the door, with great impatience he asked Men Men to allow him to come in. Then he heard some noise from above, he came up and saw how the girls were arguing with the guy, Chen Chen said that he didn't even sleep last night, he could not return to his place because Men Men hugged him, he added that sleep is very important for health and clarified that he fell asleep only for a second. Xiao Xiu was amazed by what he saw and heard. He was shocked and couldn't believe that all three of them slept together. Xiao Xiu thought to himself that he was one of the four princes, he has an extraordinary appearance and is the proud son of heaven, he dated a large number of women, but none of them could seduce him. He imagined Ming Xiao in his dreams, he recalled that when he met her, she looked like the beauty from his dreams, she has a strictly delicate appearance with large, clear and kind eyes, in his dreams, he compared this girl to a snow lotus on the top of an iceberg which is difficult to pick. Today, a cruel reality arose before Xiao, he was amazed that Chu Nan spent the night with two girls. He decided that he would have to say goodbye to this girl, in his heart, the guy said goodbye to his first and true love. The main character in the bedroom was still happy in front of the girls, he claimed he didn't do anything last night. Xiao Xiu continued to ring the doorbell endlessly, the occupants of the bedroom had already heard this. The call sounded very insistent and annoying, the girls realized that the guest who came would not leave on his own. As a result, Men Men decided to go down and finally find out who was bothering them early in the morning. Outside the door, she saw Xiao beaming, he stood with a bouquet of flowers and repeated the name Ming Yu out loud. The guy opened his arms for a hug, he mumbled a love confession inaudibly, Men Men was surprised. Xiao Xiu, after confessing his love, approached her with a kiss, the girl really liked it. Men Men shouted to the guy that he was sick and kicked him with all her might, Xiao Xiu flew away. The girl called him a pervert and slammed the door, the guy was lying on the ground in complete bewilderment. Chu Nan, together with his beautiful companions, was driving around the city in a car. 
Men Men asked the guy if he had anything in his car for her to snack on, they haven't eaten anything since morning. The guy took out plastic packages of food and threw them to the girl, she did not immediately understand what he offered her. Men Men opened the package and tasted the food, the taste was unpleasant and unappetizing for her. The girl screamed heart-trendingly and said that it was the food that stank of her unwashed feet. Ming Yu told her that the food does not smell very good, but after she tastes it, she will understand that it is delicious. Men Men continued to eat, gradually, her aversion to packaged food disappeared. She opened the second packet, she still didn't like the food, but she continued to eat it through force. As Men Men consumed food, her taste buds began to activate and turn on. After a while, she shouted that the sour and refreshing taste was furiously stimulating her taste buds, she also liked the aftertaste. After a strong sharpness, after a couple of seconds the base of the tongue begins to hurt, the throat becomes increasingly dry, thanks to the sour taste, saliva is released in the mouth, which eliminates thirst. Men began to repeat to herself that she needed more and more of this food now. The girl said that she would eat everything Chu Nan had, the guy was surprised by her behavior. After some time, a whole pile of completely empty food packaging appeared on the car seat. The hero arrived at his place of work, it was a warehouse at the university, when he got there, he shouted that he was back. Chu Nan asked his friend, willing to work, what he needed to take today. The guy noticed that some movers were opening and taking out boxes of food, his friend shouted to them that he wouldn't be able to sell these things if they were broken, he assured that these are all real products and there are no fakes. The main character came up and asked what was happening here, his friend was glad to see Chu Nan. One of the movers said seriously that they were from the university security service, they are investigating a supermarket that operates under private trust on university property, the employee said that the university should not sell healthy food at a low price, he said that he would burn all the goods. The main character intervened in the matter, with a threatening tone, he asked the workers if they were really confident that they could burn even a single product. The security worker said that the guy had no right to threaten him, Xiao Xiyu watched everything that happened from the side, he recorded everything on his smartphone. Xiao Xiyu thought with hatred that Chu Nan was constantly getting under his feet and disturbing him. He also remembered how the main character stole his girl, he decided that if he could not defeat Chu Nan, he would use various tricks against him so that the guy could not stay here, he expected Chu Nan to start a fight with the security personnel, after this, the guy would have been kicked out of the university, as a result. Xiao Xiyu would be able to regain Ming Shui. Chu Nan had already raised his hand to hit one of the security workers with all his might. Xiao Xiyu had been waiting for this moment, he was preparing to record all the guy's actions on video. At the most crucial moment, the main character's phone rang, he picked up the phone, those around were surprised. Chu Nan stood with his back and spoke on the phone, Xiao Xiyu was very annoyed. He couldn't believe that the phone call ruined his plans. At the end of the conversation the guy hung up, apparently, he decided to abandon his intention to beat up the security officers. The main character silently approached the boxes of food, everyone around him was waiting to see what he would do next. Chu Nan stood near the boxes, he told the security workers that if they could take the goods from him, then he would allow them to do whatever they wanted with the boxes. Then one of the workers told the main character that he couldn't count, he demanded that the guy stop being a fool and give them the goods. A little time passed and the workers were still unable to receive the goods, they didn't understand why they couldn't get past the guy's defense, they were very tired. Then two girls appeared, one of them greeted the head of the security service, she called him Uncle Chang, he responded by calling a girl named Yuan and asking how she came to be here. Yuan approached her uncle and told him to step aside for a minute to talk. The girl spoke for a very long time and emotionally with her uncle, after the conversation, he made a decision. The head of the university security service told his subordinates that they were all leaving. The protagonist's friend was very surprised, he asked Chu Nan who he just called. The guy cheerfully replied that he was contacting Zhou Yuan, she was a relative of the dean of one of the faculties. Here the friend was very surprised how the main character could so easily meet the dean's daughter. Chu Nan said that as soon as he came to this place, he immediately remembered all the big shots and their family members, this helped him, he reached Yuan's girl. The protagonist's friend read in his notebook that the number of civil servants at the university is more than a hundred, at the same time, Chu Nan was talking with the girls, he thanked Yuan for his help. A cramp Lin Shui stood nearby, Yuan said that the guy should have been grateful, she wouldn't have come here if Shui hadn't asked her, 
at the end, she asked that the main character not harass Lin Shui anymore. Chu Nan confirmed that this will not happen again, to himself, he could not remember when he had sexually harassed this girl. The girl said goodbye, turned around and left, at this time, the protagonist's friend believed that the total number of employees at the university and their family members would be more. He asked the main character how he could remember the faces of 400 people and how this was even possible. Chu Nan was silent, having nothing else to do, he kicked the empty tin can hard, she flew off with a clang. The guy said about you that he succeeded, then he walked around the room thoughtfully. The main character said that the security not only did nothing, but also took his money. The guy recalled her meeting with the university beauty Tao, it was she who told him that Lin Shui's friend was the daughter of the dean of academic affairs, the head of the security is her uncle. The beauty asked the guy that if he fell in love with Shui, then she could help him well. Chu Nan was surprised at this continuation, he knew that Tao was not an altruist, he didn't understand why she wanted to help him. The beauty said that she was only offering to help, the guy has every right to refuse, she clarified that she was helping him out of friendship. Life at the university went on as usual, after classes, students went out into the streets en masse. Lin Shui walked with her friend through the university courtyard, she noticed the other students looking at them sideways. Lin Shui heard some female students talking about her, they said that she only looks innocent but in reality she loves from behind. A guy was passing by, he turned to Lin Shui and said that if she gets hungry, she can always find him. Yuan said that this is all Tao continues to spread rumors, that she couldn't understand why more and more people were finding out about them. Beauty Tao was completely pleased with herself, she said that no one dares to tell her anything, she wanted to make those around her pay for looking up to her. In the university dormitory, the girl Lin Shui returned to her room after studying. She decided to change her clothes immediately, at the same time, her friend Yuan was not in the room with her. Suddenly Chu Nan rushed into the room and had a full bag of groceries, he shouted that he had brought her favorite treats for Yuan. The girl turned around sharply and threw on her shirt, she shouted to the guy that he should have knocked before entering. Lin Shui said that Yuan is not here today, she told him to put down the sweets and leave. The main character said goodbye to the girl so that she would not forget to get dressed, she told him to get lost. Chu Nan walked out of the door in frustration, at the same time, a beauty named Tao was running down the corridor. Lin Shui heard Tao's voice from the corridor, she became wary, because she realized that trouble was possible. The girl shouted at the guy to immediately come back into her room, she needed to cover him. After that, the girl quietly and carefully closed the door behind the guy, now they had to be silent. Chu Nan asked Lin Shui why she dragged him back, she told him to keep quiet, the girl explained that Tao had appeared nearby, if she sees them together again, it's not clear how it could all end. Then there was a knock on the door, Beauty Tao shouted for Lin Shui to open the door for her, she asked if he had brought another guy to him, Tao added that there is no point in hiding something, everyone already knows everything. The beauty continued to say that Lin Shui is pure and innocent during the day, but at night she shows her true appearance. The main character and the girl stood silently near the door, Tao started screaming for the door to be opened for her or she would knock it down. Chu Nen whispered that the beauty would not know that he was here if he jumped out of the window. The guy rushed straight to the window, the girl told him to wait, but it was too late, Chu Nen jumped. At the same time, the beautiful Tao kicked down the door, she entered the room with a determined look, she thought she had caught Lin Shui in the act. Tao walked around the room, she saw only one girl, the window in the room was open. The beauty shouted loudly and rudely, she asked where the guy was and why Lin Shui was here alone. The girl calmly replied that there was no one here, she invited the guest to check everything herself. Tao was perplexed, she didn't understand how this was possible, she definitely remembered that she saw someone enter this room, Lin Shui hoped to herself that the guy was okay. The guy came to his place of work in the warehouse in the basement, he shouted joyfully to his friend that he was back. A friend told Chu Nan that there would be a ban on food delivery starting next week, you will not be allowed to leave or enter the dormitory building, therefore, orders will need to be left in the lobby on the first floor, this is to protect the women's hostels. At the same time, a physical education lesson was taking place at the stadium, students gathered en masse on the field for the game. Beauty Tao, along with Xiao Xiyu, 
watched all this from afar from the bushes. One of her friends approached the girl Lin Shui and offered her to drink some water. Lin Yu asked her friend if she was worried about negative rumors about her. The girl cheerfully replied that she could not know what was true, she once again offered to drink water. Tao watched all this and said that after Shui drinks water, she will go to the toilet, then the beauty will call Chu Nan and tell him to go there, then Tao herself will go there and film them, the guy told her that Shui's reputation was already at rock bottom, the beauty's plan can further worsen her situation. Tao began to explain passionately, she said that the worse the girl's reputation, the less people will approach her, the beauty will have more opportunities to catch Lin Shui when she is most vulnerable. Xiao Shiyu said about his cunning plan that he could record a video of Chu Nan doing trading, and after this he won't be able to stay here. The beauty and the guy hid in the bushes, they realized that they now only had to wait for their plans to be fulfilled. After some time, Lin Shui ran from the stadium straight to the toilet, Tao noticed this. The girl told the guy to place an urgent order on his phone and then Chu Nan would arrive in less than an hour, Xiao Xiyu did just that. Soon the main character approached, he accurately fulfilled the delivery order placed for him. He knocked on the door and said hello, he shouted that he was fulfilling an urgent order for toilet paper, the girl inside thought his voice was familiar. The girl came out of the booth and asked the main character why he was there, she added that she didn't order anything, the guy was surprised, he had an order placed for this place. Tao ran up and shouted that they were finally caught, she also added that Lin Shui is again busy with indecency. The girl was surprised why Tao came here, the beauty angrily replied that she had recorded them on camera and now they could not do anything about it. Lin Shui shouted for Tao to delete the video immediately, the beauty told the girl to try to get her first. The beauty said she can't wait to make headlines on campus tomorrow, she was holding a phone in her hands. Quite unexpectedly, the main character grabbed Tao's hand, she wanted to break free, but could not. The guy grabbed the beauty's hand and began to pull her towards him, she had no strength to resist. Chu Nan pulled the girl towards him by force and grabbed her other hand, she was very scared. Tao threateningly asked what the guy was doing and how he dared to grab her, the main character was silent. Chu Nan reminded Tao that she wanted to try his service, he added that he would give her this opportunity right now. Beauty Tao started screaming at the guy to let her go, he continued to hold her hands. The main character continued to hug the beauty to himself, she was very taken aback by this. Chu Nan grabbed the girl's back with his hand, she still didn't understand what he wanted from her. Tao looked at the main character with frightened eyes, she no longer had the strength to resist in any way. Chu Nan rudely ordered the girl to sit down, he sat her down on the toilet lid in the stall. The main character strictly ordered her to sit and not move at all, she agreed with fear and did so. With a confident movement, Chu Nan took off his shirt, the beauty looked at him in fascination. The girl said cheerfully that the guy couldn't scare her with anything, this won't surprise her. At the same time, the guy threw his shirt at the girl with all his might, she got scared and waved it off. Then the guy began to take off his shirt, he had a nice and muscular young figure. Chu Nan stood bare-chested, Tao sat spellbound and remained silent, she didn't know what would happen next. The beauty shouted that the guy had six-pack abs, this caught her attention. The guy suddenly put his hand on the girl's shoulder, this made her even more scared. The main character brought his head close to the beauty's face, she was completely frozen in anticipation. The girl closed her eyes, she prepared her lips for a kiss, Tao didn't worry about anything anymore. The beauty did not wait for a return kiss, she only heard an incomprehensible and suspicious click. Tao saw that the guy took the smartphone in his hand and was taking pictures of himself next to her in the toilet stall. After taking a couple of photos, the guy got dressed and said that it was a good photo, the girl was simply petrified by this. The main character asked Tao how she liked the photo, has she lost the desire to spread nasty things about Lin Shui? Having gathered her thoughts, the girl shouted that she had done nothing, this guy undressed himself and took a picture of her. The guy said that it doesn't matter anymore, he asked the beauty if this was not the same as if she had spread slander about Shui. Tao thought for a long time and fell silent, she now understood the guy's plan and what he wanted to tell her with all this. The main character told the girl that she should write an explanatory note indicating that Lin Shui was not guilty of anything, Chu Nan added that if he finds out that Tao is again preparing nasty things against him, then the girl will face real consequences. After that the guy didn't say anything else, Beauty Tao left the toilet room in disappointment. She walked in complete confusion, she felt overwhelmed, Xiao Xiyu was waiting impatiently for her in the bushes. As soon as the beauty approached, 
The guy asked her how everything turned out for her, she just remained silent in response. After some time, Tao shouted that she would remember this to Chu Nan, anger and thirst for revenge shone in her eyes. At the same time, Meng Meng and Ming Shui were sitting in the office in the skyscraper, they were busy with work and business. Ming Shui ordered her subordinate to gather all the company's shareholders, the girl asked if the boss wanted to hold an emergency meeting. Men Men reminded me that her boss worked overtime for a couple of days, she hasn't even slept since yesterday, she advised Ming Shui to take a break. The boss said she was fine and there was no need to worry, she added that many companies are competing for this project and their time is running out. Approaching the window, Ming Shui continued to say that this project is connected with the future fate of the company, also related to this project is whether her father can continue to lead this company. A meeting of directors was taking place, Ming Shui sat at the head, she said that for this European business group project they have revised a new plan. The boss said that the plan should be distributed to everyone who wanted it, she clarified that time is running out, so she hopes everyone has something to offer. Suddenly the door to the meeting room opened very sharply, someone entered it very quickly and confidently. There was a dissatisfied murmur at the table, the meeting participants indignantly asked who came, they clarified that they had a meeting here. A young guy walked through the hall, he was dressed very fashionably and stylishly, he confidently approached the girl. A guy in an office suit came up and greeted Ming Yu and told her that they had not seen each other for a long time. Ming Shui asked her uncle to introduce the guest to everyone present, he agreed. The uncle introduced director in Kai Yang to everyone present, head office sent him here to be responsible for the entire plan of the European Business Group, in the future, the European Business Group's project will be entirely the responsibility of the mining director. The guy approached Ming Yu and told her to go and rest, he promised to take care of everything. Men Men was very indignant, she couldn't understand why her boss agreed to all this. Ming Shui told her subordinate to come with her, the girl wanted to be very indignant. Men Men told the boss, she spent a lot of effort on the project and now some asshole will take it away, Ming Yu replied that it was an order and they could not do anything about it. After some time, Ming Yu was resting in her office, then she heard someone knocking on her door. She told them to come into her, she was not busy with any business, I was just looking at the family photo on the table. Her father came into the office, he said in a conciliatory tone that there was simply nothing he could do. The girl told him not to be upset, it wasn't his fault that everything happened. Ming Yu said that she thought that after the project was successfully completed, they could live as a family again, to place the mother's ashes in the ancestral hall of the Kai family. The father told the girl that her aunt and uncle did not want this, they only care about their son. The girl told him that although she didn't succeed this time, she would continue to try. The father approached his daughter and said convincingly that she did not need to exhaust herself for the sake of company. Ming Yu hurried to calm him down, she told her father not to worry about her, she'll be just fine. After the end of the conversation, the father said that he needed to drive away, he advised his daughter to have a good rest. The man left her office in a negative mood, he was upset that he couldn't help her. The father remembered his late wife, when his daughter was born, he promised his wife that he would protect her, but because of him, she was repeatedly harassed by her family. The father thought to himself that this could no longer continue and he decided to find a method to help her. The father stood and silently looked at his phone in the corridor, Men Men approached him quietly and unnoticed from behind. Men Men stood there and thought that because of the current situation, all the workers in the company were depressed, she was worried that Min Yu was feeling uncomfortable. The girl thought that she should find a way to make Min feel better, she decided to ask Chu Nan to bring various delicacies to liven up the atmosphere. After some time, the main character arrived at the company office, it was a large, tall building with a large number of employees. Chu Nan could not take the elevator because the car stopped at the highest floor and did not go anywhere else, he had to climb the stairs, the path up the stairs was not easy for him, having reached the desired floor, he was glad that he had finally reached it. On the floor, he saw two bodyguards blocking the elevator, they stood on both sides of the cabin. The main character ran up to one of the guards and knocked him down, he asked them why they were blocking the door. One of the guards said that they were holding the elevator for their boss, they had been waiting for him for a very long time, a guy in an office suit just approached from behind. The guy sternly asked what was going on here, he did not understand Chu Nan's actions and aggression. Near the elevator, the main character met with the young boss, 
they looked at each other for a long time and studiedly. Men men approached them, she turned to the boss and, pointing at Chu Nan, apologized and said that he simply did not see the world. They went in different directions, Meng Men led the guy to Ming Yu's office, the boss went about his business and called the main character a stupid person. The girl took Chu Nan with her, she hastily explained to him that he should never contradict his boss. Chu Nan said quietly to Meng Meng that the guy they just saw wanted to kidnap Ming Shui. Ming Shui was sitting in her office, she no longer had the strength to work, she recalled her recent conversation with her father. Men Men opened the door, she invited the main character to come into her office with a smile. The boss was surprised, she didn't expect the guy to come, she asked Chu Nan why he was here. Meng Meng hurriedly explained that it was she who called the guy so that he could come here and help Ming Shui rest and relax. The boss said in an official voice that she could not start resting until she had settled all matters, she needs to find out how the guy was able to get after the leader today, she suspects that one of her relatives is behind this. Men Men said she was starting to get angry, this project was an opportunity for Ming Shui to prove that she was worth something to the family, but her father doesn't want to do anything. Chu Nan was consuming food from the bag at this time, he said quietly, confidently and calmly that he could help. Men Men asked the main character in surprise what exactly he meant, the guy was silent and thinking. The main character imagined himself as an invincible ninja and said that he would kill his opponent silently. Meng Meng got angry and told Chu Nan not to talk nonsense, she added that everything is serious here, the guy agreed. Chu Nan asked the pensive Ming Shui whether this whole project rests on her, she answered completely in the affirmative. The main character said judiciously that if he were that guy, he would finish this project as soon as possible. Ming Shui was struck by a guess, she began to understand something. The girl repeated to herself that the guy's interest would be to finish faster. The girl fell completely silent, she was lost in her thoughts, now the situation looked different for her. She reflected that she had never thought about events in this way, she always inherited at the direction of her family and did not even try to disobey, she decided to actually do something. Ming Shui finally said that it makes sense, she added that there may be problems with some family members. Men Men told her boss that they would not let her snatch the company, if Ming Yu becomes the leader again, then she can then return to the family and everything will be as before. Men Men was very happy, she thanked the main character and said that Chu Nan, in her opinion, is very smart. Ming Shui told her father about her proposals, he didn't like it and said it was impossible. Men Men turned to the chairman and said that if nothing works out, then the project will be lost tomorrow. Meng Meng added with excitement that Ming Shui is very capable and she will definitely cope with everything successfully. The father said judiciously to the girl that the point was not at all that he did not trust her in anything. The chairman said that there are a lot of people waiting to expose themselves to ridicule, if they start fighting them now, there will be no turning back. Ming Shui told her father that she understood his concerns, but if he did not take any measures to stop in Kai Yang, then very soon the entire company would come under his control, in such a situation, they should only take risks. Ming Shui finally said that in a family only the result is valued, and everything else is secondary, if they can improve the outcome, the family's loyalty may be greatly swayed in their favor. Men Men accompanied the main character near the exit to the office building, she told him he did a great job, the girl promised him a good bonus for his efforts. The guy said that he came up with the solution completely by accident, Men Men was surprised that he didn't want any reward. The father communicated with his daughter, he told her that it may be that her fake boyfriend will be identified, Chu Nan doesn't look like an ordinary person, Ming Shui said that the main character has helped her a lot lately. The chairman said that although the guy is playing a role, he is very capable, he would even allow him to become his daughter's husband. The girl was embarrassed by such words from her father, she said she didn't like his jokes, the father was amused. The guy returned to his place of work in the warehouse, he noticed that he himself and his friend Ma Chao were not there. Chu Nan called his friend and said that he had packed everything, and he also asked where Ma Chao was now. Ma Chao answered on the phone that the main character had already quickly returned, he thought that Chu Nan would be late, so he went and looked at the house with Zhou Yuan. The main character was very amazed, he did not believe that his friend went to look at the house with a girl named Yuan, he asked what their relationship was. Ma Chao told the main character not to talk nonsense, he explained that his store was almost invisible due to the university building, for this reason they decided to look at where they could move, he decided that Yuan could help him well. Chu Nan completely calmed down and now everything became absolutely clear to him, 
he finished his phone call. The city plunged into autumn, and the main character walked through the streets in search of the right address to meet a friend. The guy was walking down the street and looking for the address that Ma Chao had indicated, he knew for sure that it was somewhere here. He approached a small building, he saw his friend next to the building and he called him. Ma Chao was cheerful and full of optimism, he told the main character to come to him now. He led the guy to the building and said that although there were no residents here, it was located next to the university, a lot of students will be visiting them. Ma Chao said that the building has a lot of space in both stocks, they got it all thanks to Yuan, she also reduced the rent for them, in the future, you should not be afraid of threats from the university. Chu Nan asked his friend why Yuan was so kind to him, in just a couple of days, and they are already on such good terms. Ma Chao said enthusiastically that the girl treats him like a little brother, he started wiping the wall and said that he still had a lot to do, the warehouse will need to be cleared urgently. Ma Chao said that he wanted to wait until the entire warehouse was filled with snacks, he never thought that he would be able to rent a warehouse with his own money, he added that thanks to this warehouse, his sister's school fees will be reduced in the future. The main character looked and realized that he needed to help his friend with his work. Chu Nan said that they need to try hard, his friend agreed and they eagerly got to work. After some time they finished their work, the store was completely ready and open to visitors and guests. A lot of people from all over the city came to the store to buy, Ma Chao was very happy with his success. He greeted everyone and invited them to come in, he was very happy that his efforts were not in vain and the store finally opened. Ma Chao stood behind the counter and served customers, he was very happy that so many people came. Chu Nan told him that a number of goods had already run out, he decided to go and get more from the warehouse. At this time, Lin Shui was walking carefree on the street with her friend Yuan. During the conversation, she asked Yuan why she decided to help Wa Chao, is she on good terms with him? At this time, the girls approached the store where Ma Chao worked, they looked at him as he stood behind the counter and thanked everyone for their purchases. After thinking a little, Yuan said that the guy works a lot and for this reason she decided to help him. Yuan suggested that her friend go to the store and buy some snacks, she agreed. Then a group of guys approached the store, they first passed by and then decided to go inside. Uldin of the guys saw Lin Shui inside, she was just choosing what to buy for herself from food. The guy suddenly and unexpectedly ran up to the girl, she was surprised, he asked what she was buying for herself here. The guy came up and told her to take whatever she wanted and then he would pay for everything, the girl thanked her and refused. The guy invited her to go to his house, he said that he has a pastry chef at home who prepares elegant desserts, his desserts are much tastier than store-bought snacks. He began to pester everyone more rudely, he told the girl that she would definitely like it, she still refused. Unexpectedly, Yuan intervened in the situation, she helped her friend free herself from the guy by force. Yuan told the guy that she had warned him never to pester Shui again. The guy got angry, he said that he was not interested in the girl's status, so that she doesn't think that he's afraid of her, he called the girl's father a pathetic dog bed. Yuan angrily asked him what he had just told her, she felt insulted. The guy repeated that the girl's father is a pathetic mongrel who should always obey his father. The guy described in words how the insignificant and powerless father of the girl Yuan completely obeys his father. Yuan couldn't stand it anymore, she hit the guy in the face with all her might, he fell to the floor. The guy was very surprised, he asked the girl very angrily how she dared. Rising to his feet, the guy asked the girl again how she dared to slap him in the face. The store owner intervened in the conflict, he came up from the side and bravely stood between the guy and the Yuan. The girl was surprised that Mao Cho came to her defense, he told the guy who boldly passed by that it was forbidden to hit girls. Visitors to the establishment gathered around, they agreed with the owner, someone shouted at the guy that he was using his father to control others. The guy was silent and became more and more irritated, after a short pause, he shouted at the owner to move aside. Ma Chao stood scared, he didn't know what to do, the guy was getting ready to hit him over the head with a chair. The guy shouted for the last time to Ma Chao to get out, the owner stood still, he had already raised his hand. But still, the owner of the establishment was not hit in the head with a chair, the main character came to his aid in time. Ma Chao was very happy, he said that he came as soon as he could, Chu Nan asked what the net was, pointing to the guy who had come. Chu Nan grabbed him by the clothes and lifted him off the ground, the hooligan who came demanded that the main character let him go. The bully turned to his friends, he asked why they were standing and demanded that they help him immediately. The accomplices rushed to their leader, 
they ran confidently and were eager to help him. The main character stood calmly, he was ready for a fight, he was still holding the leader of the hooligans by the collar. Chu Nan realized that it was time to act, he beat the guys who ran up with all his might and scattered them around. The main character asked Ma Chao what was going on, he asked whether the guys who came were creating any problems for him. The owner of the establishment said confidently that everything was fine and nothing serious had happened. Yuan addressed the bully by name, she named him Chin Yu Liang, she said that this was too much because he wanted to hit the girl, she told him to get out of here. Suddenly, the voice of the beautiful Theo came from the side, she shouted loudly to the entire hall for Lin Shui to catch. Next, Teo took and poured tea from her glass onto Lin Shui's clothes, she suffered greatly from this. Yuan walked up to her friend and asked her if she was okay, she answered that no. The beauty feigned an apology, she explained that her hand simply twitched, she still had the glass in her hand. Tao said that she was sorry that her milk tea was destroyed, she said she would buy another one later. The main character intervened in the conflict, he asked the beauty what she was doing, he reminded her of what he had told her. Tao asked the guy what was wrong with him, he becomes very fierce as soon as he sees her, she explained that someone pushed her. The beauty burst into tears, she told the guy that he was always angry, she asked why he hated her so much, the guy calmed down. Tao told the main character that she wants to pick up the beaten hooligans, she said that these were her friends and she needed to help them. When the beauty left, she thanked the guy and said that she would teach all the beaten guys good manners. The leader of the hooligans asked Theo what she was doing here, he remembered that she had called him before. The beauty showed complete innocence, she said she just wanted to take a walk here. Theo thought to herself that she deliberately lied to Chen so that he would come and understand the noise in the supermarket, after such a fuss, few people will go buy anything from Ma Chao. The main character asked the store owner if everything was okay and if anything hurt, he replied that everything was fine, just a small bruise. Ma Chao said annoyed that it was too bad that the customers ran away because of all this commotion. Yuan stood behind him, she told him that he didn't need to think about business right now, there was blood all over his back. The girl said that she would take him to the hospital, Ma Chao told her not to worry, he is okay, he's a very strong guy, Yuan added that she would definitely take him to the hospital. The main character noticed that a lonely and tearful Lin Shui was standing next to him. The girl told Chu Nan not to be offended, since it all started because of her, the guy replied that everything was fine, just a bunch of bastards wanted to die. The girl's outfit was very dirty after tea was spilled on her, the guy told her that she couldn't go out like that, he added that he lives in the next room and there is a toilet there, he invited the girl to wash herself and said that he would bring her new clothes. Standing in the shower, Lin Shui thought that she used to think that the main character was the same as the Chin guy. The girl now realized everything and decided that she had been completely wrong about him before. Lin Shui walked away to take a shower, the guy decided at this time to clean up the store a little and put everything in order. Suddenly, the main character heard from the side a girl calling his name from the shower. He dropped everything he was doing, went to the shower and asked the girl what happened to her. Lin Shui timidly looked out from behind the door, she was wrapped in a towel, the girl said that she did not find underwear in the clothes that the guy brought. Chu Nan annoyedly said that he had completely forgotten, he added to her that he would bring everything now. After some time, he brought the necessary clothes, he slipped it through the door to the girl, she thanked him. The girl began to get dressed in the booth, the main character told her that he needed to move away, if she needs anything, she should just call. The girl was putting on her trousers while standing on the wet floor, at the same moment, she suddenly slipped her foot. The guy heard a noise and immediately felt something was wrong, he returned quickly to help the girl. The girl was falling and wanted to grab the door, but didn't have time, Chu Nan was already standing next to her. Chu Nan managed to grab the girl, Lin Shui, thanks to the guy's efforts, he avoided falling to the floor. Then the guy noticed that a lot of water had leaked onto the shower floor due to a broken tap in the wash basin. The guy told the girl that the tap had broken again, she answered him with difficulty that she was in pain. The two of them sat on the floor, Chu Nan asked Lin Shui if she was okay, she didn't answer him. The girl wanted to get up, she apologized to the guy, he told her not to worry. Chu Nan commanded the girl to get up quickly, Lin Shui immediately agreed and began to get up. She stood all wet, and at that time the main character was lying near the wall, he silently and incessantly looked at her. Lin Shui became preoccupied, she noticed that the guy was still looking at her with a very passionate gaze. The girl asked him what was wrong, 
the main character asked her if she accidentally forgot to put on her underwear. The girl screamed in shame, she felt ashamed, she wanted to cover herself by stretching her t-shirt down. The girl screamed hysterically for the guy to get out, she was extremely ashamed and scared. The main character returned to work, he spent until late at night cleaning up the store that had been destroyed earlier. In the evening Ma Chao came, he thanked the main character for putting the store in order, the guy asked his friend how his wound was, he replied that everything was fine, the doctor said not to worry about anything. The store owner said sadly that he did not expect to encounter such problems on the first day of opening, Chu Nan told him that everything would get better soon. The main character heard his phone ringing in his pocket, he realized that they were calling him at work. Ming Shui called Chu Nan, he asked her what happened, the guy thought to himself that he had already talked to men men about this, but he didn't think that Min herself would call. Ming Shui told the guy that the official tender meeting of the European business group would be held tomorrow evening, they need to win the auction according to plan, the girl said that she wanted them to see the end result together. The chief mountain expressed his consent to her, he told her confidently on the phone that he would be there tomorrow evening. In the evening they all got together and walked to the office building, they were all dressed in business casual, the guy asked if this was the right place, Ming Shui answered in the affirmative, Men Men added that they must succeed. Approaching the building they saw many people, Meng Meng said excitedly that Kai Yang had arrived before them. A security guard met them near the entrance, he asked which company they were representing to participate in the European Chamber of Commerce Tender Conference. Meng Meng happily and confidently said that they were from the Uroma Company, the security guard at the entrance looked at her in surprise. He told her that a representative of this group had just entered the building, the man who entered told the guard that there should be no other representatives. Men Men decided to rectify the situation, she said that the direction of the content for which they are responsible is different. After thinking a little, the security guard apologized and said that only responsible persons with sufficient qualifications can participate in the auction. Men Men said that the bastard who entered in front of them clearly said this specifically so that they would not be allowed inside, she asked everyone what they should do now. Ming Shui said that there was some mistake, she said that she would call her father so that someone could let them inside. Men Men, with a voice full of tragedy, said that it was already very late, they won't be able to get inside. The girl pointed to a large clock inside the building, she added that there were only five minutes left before the start. The main character, surrounded by his companions, stood near the entrance to an office building, men kept repeating what they should do. Chu Nan thought about it, he told the girl not to worry and he would definitely come up with something. A minute later, the guy approached the guard near the entrance, he took it out of his pocket and gave him some kind of card. At the same time, the guard ran inside the building, Men Men asked what card he gave him, Chu Nan answered her that she would see soon. Behind the front doors, someone was arguing very strongly among themselves, this went on for several minutes. The door opened and a guy in a business suit ran out, he was very scared and excited. The guy approached Chu Nan and told him a terrible mistake had happened, the main character replied that it was okay. The guy launched them all into the building, he asked their permission to allow him to accompany them. When they went upstairs, Men Men asked her boss what it was, she replied that she did not know. The conference host invited everyone present to enjoy the food before the event began. The presenter also added that the event would begin in exactly one hour, the main character and his companion still had time. Men Men asked the guy what kind of card he gave to the guard, Chu Nan was devouring sandwiches at this time, he asked her if she really wanted to know. Men Men confirmed her desire, she looked at the guy carefully and even with some suspicion. The main character answered her that he just had some kind of business card, he said that once he passed by a guy who looked important, and a business card fell out of this guy's pocket. Chu Nan further said that he came up with the idea of giving this found business card to the guard, the girls listened to him in surprise. Ming Shui was silent, Men Men asked the guy if he was a thief, the guy continued to eat at this time. The main character, as if nothing had happened, repeated that the business card fell out of the guy's pocket and there was no theft, he thought to himself that it was impossible for the girls to find out that the business card belonged to him. The presenter said that all participants should now go to the conference room in the eastern part of the building. The crowd of people gradually began to move towards the door, they were heading to the conference room. The main character and his companion sat down in their places, the presenter thanked everyone present for taking their time and coming to this evening, 
the presenter added that it was a great honor for the organizers to meet them all. The presenter told everyone present that he was introducing the organizers of this event to them. The presenter called Patriarch Jared from the Smith family, which is one of the richest families in Europe, to the stage, this family has many businesses around the world and especially in the Middle East, it is there that the family monopolizes a large volume of crude oil imports and exports. Men Men slyly told the main character that the blonde foreigner has a business in the Middle East, Chu Nan's family lives there, so the guy should know him, the girl reminded the main character that he had previously said that his family was involved in the arms trade. Chu Nan said calmly that the foreign businessman's family lives in Europe, he may not even know him. Men Men noticed that the main character was wearing glasses, she asked him why he did this, the guy said that the light on stage was very bright, so he put them on, he thought to himself that the foreigner on stage should not recognize him. The presenter turned to the guests and told them to place their business plans in a special box on the stage, then Mr. Jared and his assistants will review the proposals one by one. The presenter then said that Jared would choose a company that would become his partner. Ming Shui was holding an envelope with her proposal in her hands, Men Men told her to go on stage more boldly. The girl walked up onto the stage and boldly dropped the envelope into the box, she is still hoping for success. She began to walk down from the stage and into the hall, then she was seen by a guy who had previously been at a meeting in her office. The guy sharply called out to the girl, he didn't expect to see her here, he also roughly grabbed her hand. He came closer to her and asked how she ended up here, the girl told him to watch his hands, since they are on stage. The guy held the girl tightly by the hand, he told her to stop trying to resist and give up, he assured her that he would still be the winner, the guy asked if she wanted war. The guy let the girl go and told her that her father would be in trouble if she continued this nonsense. When Ming Shui returned to her place, Meng Meng asked her what the guy on the stage told her, the girl replied that she was fine and that her friend should not worry. The presenter said from the stage that the time for submitting plans was coming to an end, guests can enjoy food and drinks in the lounge next door until the verdict is rendered. Time gradually passed closer to night, the conference guests calmly communicated and relaxed, they were waiting. Ming Shui sat alone on the sofa, she thought about how her plan would still win in the end. Men Men and the main character approached her, she was offered something to eat, Ming Shui replied that she was not hungry. Men Men told her boss that she didn't need to be so nervous since she had already done everything necessary, she also added that the boss's plan is the best and that they will definitely win this tender. Chu Nan took a small piece of cake on his fork, he brought it to Ming Shui's mouth, he invited her to try a piece. The girl obediently opened her mouth, she decided not to resist the guy anymore and take some food. Men Men said offendedly that she also wanted to try the food, why did Chu Nan only feed Ming Shui? The guy agreed, he asked Men Men to open her mouth, he threw a large piece of food straight into her mouth. Men Men coughed, she shouted to the guy if he really wanted her to choke and die, he replied that she did not need to be angry since he fed her. Then Men Men took the whole cupcake and hit my boyfriend in the face, they all cheered up, Ming Shui told her assistant to calm down. A guy from the stage was watching the main character and his companions, he thought to himself that he was very tired of them. The presenter called everyone to the stage, he thanked the guests for their wait, everyone was waiting for the results. The presenter began to say that after careful selection, Mr. Jared would like to personally say the result. Jared took the microphone and greeted the audience, he said that everyone present here came up with some pretty interesting ideas, but he cannot choose more than one sentence. Jared picked up the folder from the table, he was preparing to name the winning company, the audience froze in anticipation of the results. He opened the folder and began to read, it was very quiet in the hall, everyone really wanted to know the name of the winner. Then Jared's voice sounded and he named the company Yoronwa, Ming Shui was surprised and Chu Nan was happy. The spectators jumped out of their seats, they were surprised by the result, they clapped and congratulated him on his victory. Then Kai Ming suddenly stood up, people nearby enthusiastically applauded him for his victory. He thanked everyone around him and said thanks to everyone who supported him, he was ready to receive the reward. The presenter was surprised, he saw that there were two people standing in the hall, it was Ming Shui and also Kai Ming. Jared looked and didn't understand why the two of them stood up, he had to decide who to give the victory. Ming Shui turned to him and said that the folder he chose belonged to her, there was a noise in the audience, 
people did not understand why Tsai Ming stood up the same way. The girl continued to say that the Yuronwa Company is currently under the complete control of Tsai Minga. Kai Ming sat and listened to her carefully, he wondered if the girl really wanted to change the result, he decided that Ming Shui would not be able to accept defeat. The presenter asked that if there are two winners, which of them will sign the cooperation agreement. Tsai Ming said that he is currently the executive director of Yuronwa, this means that he must sign the contract. Ming Shui replied that she wrote the plan that Jerad is holding in her hands, therefore, she is better suited for this role. His assistant ran up to Jared, he told the boss that there were two plans from this company. The businessman was very surprised, he could not understand how there could be two plans from one company. Jared approached the girl and Tsai Ming and asked if they were both from the same company, then how could they participate separately, he didn't understand this. Ming Shui said that she personally drew up the plan that the businessmen chose, for a number of specific reasons, she and Tsai Ming voted separately from each other. Jared asked her to stop, he said that he was not interested in her excuses, he said that the girl's action discredited this event and it is unforgivable, the businessman added that if he gets away with this, it will be unfair to the others. The girl still wanted to say something, but Jared did not give her such an opportunity, he was preparing to give his verdict. Ming Shui realized that this was not her last chance, but she could no longer say anything in her defense. Jared put his hand on the folder and began to tell everyone present about his decision. He officially announced the disqualification of the Uroma company and silence reigned in the hall. The presenter took the stage and confirmed to the audience the official disqualification of the Uroma company. He further said that there would be a procedure for rechecking business plans to find a winner, he asked to wait. There was a dissatisfied noise in the hall, the participants did not understand why they had to wait from behind Yoroma's office. Men men told her boss not to be upset, they could still come up with something, Ming Shui replied that everything was useless and they lost. The girl sat and thought, dark thoughts visited her, she realized that Tsai would transfer all the responsibility to her. Ming Shui looked at her opponent and realized that even her father could not help her in such a situation. Seven the girl resigned herself, she realized that this was the end for her, all her efforts went down the drain. After some time, the presenter entered the stage, he apologized for the wait and said that Jared was ready to announce the result. The businessmen said that after a detailed check, they were able to choose a plan, although the plan has minor flaws, it meets their requirements. Jared picked up the folder, opened it and read that her family's new partner would be the Hakute Company. The head of the winning company, Hakute, was very happy, Finally his dream came true. Chu Nan told Meng Meng that her ex was the winner, the last time he saw this guy was at a cocktail party. In a solemn atmosphere, the head of the company, Hakute, appeared on stage, Jared shook his hand. After the award ceremony ended, everyone left the building, Ming Shui was standing there near the exit. The businessman invited the winning guy to go to his office to discuss the details of cooperation. Suddenly, Ming Shui stood in their way, everyone was surprised, she spoke directly to Jared. The guy accompanying the businessman turned to the girl and asked what she was doing here, the event is over, he told her to get out of the way. Ming Shui asked Jared if he chose her plan, it means he somehow liked it, she asked to be given one more chance. The businessman told her curtly that no matter how good her plan was, he could not cooperate with a company that was plotting behind his back, this isn't the first time he's seen schemers like her. Jared ordered his guards to get the girl out of his way and they immediately began to act. Ming Shui still had hope, she shouted to the businessman that she was not a fraud and asked him to listen to her again. Men men decided to intervene in the matter, she shouted menacingly and asked who called her boss a fraud, she added that if a businessman does not know all the truth, then how can he judge? Jared was slowly starting to lose his temper, he said that this had nothing to do with him, he asked the girl if this is how company employees should behave, he told them to get out again. Security began to take the girls away, men men screamed for the guards to get away from her, Ming Shui asked the guards to stop. The main character appeared from behind, he grabbed the guards' hands and freed his girlfriends. The girls were amazed by the appearance of the guy, the main character told the guards to leave, he needed to say something. The guy realized that there was no point in hiding, he took off his glasses, he asked the businessman if he behaved as a gentleman should behave. Jared was very surprised, he never expected to see the main character here, the businessman was even briefly speechless. Chu Nan, as if nothing had happened, approached the businessman and said that although this was their first meeting, he did not think that the ladies were lying, 
he asked to give them another chance. Jared found the strength to agree with the guy's proposal, he thought to himself why Chu Nan was here. The businessman quickly came to his senses, in an official tone, he told the guy that he was right, Jared said he was hot-tempered and adamant. The people around the businessman were amazed by such changes in him, they understood that something had happened but could not understand what exactly. Jared invited Ming Shui to his office for negotiations, the girl happily agreed, she got another chance. They all approached the businessman's office, he invited them all to come to the meeting with him. Meng Meng asked Chu Nan in surprise what just happened, he acted out complete surprise and misunderstanding in front of her. Then suddenly the head of the winning company, Hakute, stopped near the entrance, he glanced at the main character in Men Men, some guesses arose in his head. Ming Shui held productive negotiations with Jared, after they finished, they left his office. The businessman told the girl at the end of the meeting that after they had discussed their general direction, they could first go home and rest, it's quite late already, the girl thanked him for the opportunity. The businessman saw Chu Nan standing nearby, he gestured to Jared that he should be silent now. Jared happily told the girl that he wanted to apologize very much for his behavior. The main character remained silent, he was glad that his attempt to help the girl ended with success, Chu Nan realized that his work here was finished. It was already a strong night outside, but the city took its own course, the main character Men Men decided to take a walk. The guy said that the liveliness of the city is so mesmerizing that you forget about how you want to eat. Men Men said joyfully that it was finally over, Ming Shui would eventually be able to sleep. The girl remembered the events of the previous evening, she said it was very strange how Jared changed his attitude, Chu Nan told the girl to treat him to a good dinner for his efforts. Men Men agreed with the guy, and she invited him to move on, she decided to distract herself and forget everything. The girl shouted joyfully that they would go to the best restaurants in this city, they moved down the street. At one of the eateries they bought themselves some light food on sticks for a snack and went on for a walk. Then they entered some establishment and were greeted by the owner, the girl said that she was sure that the food here was good. Men Men suggested choosing a seat by the window, Chu Nan looked to the side and saw a suspicious guy with an old woman. The main character came up and heard their conversation, the old woman called her companion Xia Yu Su and asked if she was too old for him, the guy heatedly asked her if she really thought he was lying. Xia Yu Su told the old woman that her inner world was much more beautiful than that of any lady, the old woman was amazed by these words. The guy sat next to the elderly woman and thought joyfully that he had finally caught a big fish, he wanted to take all her money from her. To please the old woman, he decided to feed her with his own hands, he asked her to open her mouth. The elderly woman was very happy and flattered by such attention and care for her, she obediently opened her mouth. Suddenly a lady came up from the side, she slapped Xiao Su's hands, the old woman was very scared. The lady asked the guy who the woman next to him was, he was very surprised and did not know what to answer. Xiao Su collected his thoughts and shouted to the woman to let him go, he also asked her how she knew he was there, he asked if she was following him. The woman shouted at him why he no longer needed his wife and children, she said she gave him all her money, he promised her to always be with her, the guy was angry because the woman disturbed him. An old woman came up and asked the guy what was happening here, she was scared, the guy told her not to worry and that he would sort everything out. Xiao Su led the woman outside, he told her not to start, there were a lot of people around and he invited her to step away and talk. Men and the main character were sitting at this time and eating fish food at the table with appetite. The girl looked out the window and something caught her attention, she saw a guy beating someone in an alley nearby. Looking closely, she saw that a young guy was beating a woman on the ground. Men men stood up sharply, she was outraged by what she saw and decided to immediately run and help. Chu Nan worriedly asked where she was going. Men Men walked confidently and decisively into the street to help the woman. Xiao Su continued to beat the woman at this time, she screamed but could not get up or even get up. The woman screamed and asked the guy not to kill her, she promised that she would not disturb him again and asked him to let her go. Xiao Su hit the woman and said that he should tell her not to pester him, he asked why she was here again. The beaten woman was lying on the ground, she could no longer get up or speak, at this time, Men Men came up. The girl shouted menacingly that she would kill the guy and kicked him with all her might, he flew to the side. Men Men approached the woman and asked if she was okay, she raised her head with difficulty. Then the woman gathered her strength, 
stood up a little and shouted loudly to the girl to be careful. Xiao Su approached the girl from behind and hit her on the head with all his might with a stick, men men fell to the ground. The guy was still holding his bruised head, he approached the woman and said that it was her fault, she was the one who brought him problems. Xiao Su prepared to hit the woman again and asked why she couldn't just be obedient. Xiao Su stood menacingly near his familiar lady and Meng Meng, he rudely told the woman that if she tried to find him again, she would not get away with simple beatings. Then the guy heard a noise from the side, it was the main character who came running in time to help the girls. Chu Nan hit Xiao Su in the face with all his might, he fell to the ground unconscious. The main character asked Men Men how she was feeling, she replied that everything was fine with her and there was only a slight embarrassment. After some time, the main character and the girls returned to the restaurant, they dragged Xiao Su with them. The old woman who had dinner with Xiao Su was very surprised, she couldn't understand what happened. At first, the elderly woman considered Chu Nan and the women next to him to be the culprits, she asked them what they had done. Standing next to the beaten Xiao Su, Meng Meng said confidently that he is a fraudster and cannot be trusted. The beaten swindler began to make excuses, he said that the girl was completely lying. Here a lady intervened in the conversation, she said that Xiao Su gained her trust and then stole her money and beat her. The guy began to approach the old woman again, he wanted to explain to her that he only had a small misunderstanding with Chu Nan and his women, the elderly woman turned away from him and told him not to approach her. Xiao Su shouted to the departing old woman to wait, but she no longer listened to him and left. Then the scammer turned to the lady Men Men and told them that he was going to beat them to death. Chu Nan grabbed Xiao Su's clothes from behind, he told the scammer that he had learned nothing, the main character has already called the police and will be at the restaurant soon tomorrow. A little time passed and law enforcement officers arrived, night has already fallen in the city. Chu Nan and his companion Meng Meng watched in silence as the police took Xiao Su away with them. They saw that because of the late hour, everything in the city was already closed, they have nowhere else to go. The girl stood silently next to the main character, she showed impatience in her appearance and actions. Chu Nan paid attention to her, he saw and understood that something was seriously bothering the girl. Men Men said quietly that she wanted to write, her behavior showed impatience. There was no accessible toilet anywhere nearby, they were forced to go around the corner of some building. The main character waited for the girl to relieve herself, after a while he asked her if she had finished. Men Men told him irritably not to rush her, she also told Chu Nan not to peek and make sure no one comes up. The guy told her that she has a big bladder, she told him not to talk about it out loud. Chu Nan said thoughtfully that it seemed to him that her urine got on his pants. Men Men was indignant at the guy's question, she was very irritated by the current situation. Suddenly the girl slipped in a puddle of urine, she began to fall to the ground. During her fall, she noticed that there was a large pile of crap in front of her, she could have fallen on it. The girl looked ahead in fear, she realized that she needed to contrive them so as not to fall on shit. During the fall, she managed to push herself off the ground with her hands to jump over a pile of shit. The girl performed a perfect somersault, she was able to avoid a fatal fall. The girl, after somersaulting in the air, landed perfectly on the ground, Chu Nan had no idea what was happening behind him. The girl was about to go out from around the corner of the building, but realized that something was going wrong for her. Only now she noticed that during the somersault her panties flew off and fell on the guy's head. Men Men was very embarrassed and amazed, this made her very ashamed and embarrassed. The girl decided to flee, nothing else came to her mind, Chu Nan was still standing with her panties on his head. Gradually morning came to the city, everything around was getting light, but the main character and his girlfriend did not notice this. The girl ran away from the guy with a desperate cry, she was very ashamed and scared. Chu Nan quickly and menacingly ran after her, he continued to follow her the entire time. The guy shouted after her to stop, he waved her panties, she ran away screaming desperately. At the warehouse in Machao's store, Lin Shui and Yuan met, they had a little work to do there. There were bags of groceries in front of Lin Shui, she looked at them with caution and said that she might not be able to carry it all, Yuan told her not to worry and that she could handle it. Yuan told the girl goodbye that Chu Nan might help her, she said goodbye and left. It was a sunny day in the city, the students were relaxing and walking near the university on the street. A university beauty named Tao was riding along the road on a hoverboard, she was very bored, she rode the streets in search of fun and adventure. Tao saw in the distance some familiar silhouettes of two people, 
looking closer, she saw that it was Chu Nan and Lin Shui coming. The beauty thought about Chu Nan that he is very kind to Lin Shui and he treats Tao as an enemy. The beauty decided that she would now show everyone, she began to gradually approach the couple. The main character and his girlfriend walked calmly down the street, Tao was gradually approaching them from behind. Chu Nan noticed a threat in the form of a beauty from afar, he realized that the time had come to act. It all ended with Tao crashing her head at full speed into the guy's chest. Tao said in a plaintive voice that she was in pain and the guy's chest was very hard, Chu Nan asked her sternly what she was up to again. The beauty asked him what he meant, she explained that she was just learning to ride, but he blocked her way. The main character told Tao instructively that it is very dangerous for her to learn to ride alone. The beauty said pitifully that there was absolutely no one to accompany her, she asked the guy to help her. Chu Nan said that he could not help since he was delivering cargo, Tao began to lament pitifully, she said that no one would help her and she would receive a fatal fracture, she said that she was lonely and no one wanted to accompany her. The guy thought for a while, took pity on Tao and told the girl that he would help her. The beauty was very happy, the guy told her that he could stay with her for no more than half an hour because he needed to deliver something else, Tao said that they should go faster. The main character said that now he must help Lin Shui deliver her purchases, the beauty said that she would go with him. Beauty Tao was secretly glad that her insidious plans were going according to plan, she walked next to the guy. Lin Shui did not react in any way to the appearance of the university beauty nearby. The guy was delivering the current order to the Yuronwa Company headquarters building. Chu Nan brought the boxes with the order to the entrance and Meng Meng ran up to him, she was surprised by such fast delivery. The guy said that he didn't expect his boss to make such a big order, the girl answered him that her company needed snacks for tea and for this reason they bought it. Men men told the guy where to put the delivered goods, he brought boxes of food. The girl told him to stay in the restroom next to Ming Shui's office for now, she herself is now running and will bring money, the guy agreed. Chu Nan walked through the indicated door into the restroom, there he decided to find a place to sit. The guy thought to himself if there was a bathroom in this place, there was a small sofa for relaxation, Chu Nan decided that Ming Shui often works overtime and because of this he does not go home. He thought to himself that the sofa was very comfortable, he remembered that there were a lot of orders today, so he decided to rest. Chu Nan closed his eyes and decided to rest quietly in this place while waiting for Men Men. The guy even dozed off, he felt quiet, good and comfortable, he immediately forgot about everything. Suddenly, Ming Shui entered the rest room from the adjacent office through the doors. The girl was very tired, she decided to immediately lie down here and rest. Chu Nan looked at her in fascination, but he couldn't take his eyes off the girl's breasts. She lay down on the sofa in the dark, she didn't even notice that the main character was already sitting there. The guy was surprised and confused, the exhausted girl lay down on his legs instead of a pillow. The main character looked at his girlfriend lying down and was surprised why she was so tired. While sleeping, the girl turned her head, she, half asleep, wanted to lie down more comfortably. Chu Nan sat and could not move, Ming Shui continued to lie peacefully and sleep. Very abruptly and unexpectedly, the girl opened her eyes, she couldn't understand where the guy came from here. Chu Nan asked the girl as friendly as possible if she had woken up, Ming Shui stood up. A little later, the girl jumped to the side, the guy was scared, he fell silent. Having collected her thoughts, the girl asked the main character in surprise why he was here. The main character was sitting on the sofa and Ming Shui was next to him, he made excuses to her by saying that she lay down before he had time to say anything. The girl was silent, she remembered that earlier Meng Men had said that Chu Nan would bring snacks, she couldn't believe she fell asleep on a guy's lap. The doors opened and Men Men entered the room, she told the guy happily that she had brought money. She was very surprised to see the main character and her boss in the lounge room on the sofa. Men Men left after a short period of time, Closing the door behind her, he realized that she was at the wrong time. Having closed the doors, she said to herself to the main character and Ming Miu so that they would not worry, she also wished Min not to let her down. The main character sat next to the girl for a long time, they were silent, the guy was embarrassed and embarrassed. Ming Shui went into the office and told Meng Meng not to talk nonsense, she explained that Chu Nan had simply come to rest, the guy confirmed this. The main character said joyfully that if they brought him money, he could leave. Meng Meng told her boss that Chu Nan is a good guy and she can make the first move, 
Ming Shui said that all this is not easy, moreover, she is not interested in any relationship. Then the boss turned to the girl and asked how she was doing with her relationship, she remembered that Men Men began to avoid her boyfriend. Men Men decided to come up with an excuse, she said that she realized that she and the guy were not very suitable for each other. The main character was walking down the street, he decided that he had done a good job today, Ma Chao will be very happy when he finds out, he called his friend. Ma Chao greeted him and called the main character an old man, he also asked if he missed him. Chu Nan became angry, he rudely told Ma Chao not to dare call him old. Having calmed down a little, the main character asked his friend when he would transfer the money to his bank card. Ma Chao answered calmly and joyfully so that the main character would not worry. He said that he lent him some money for urgent use. Chu Nan shouted to his friend on the phone that he took all the money for himself, because of this, the main character borrowed from others for travel expenses. Ma Chao answered on the phone that the main character has a strong and powerful voice, he said that he would worry whether Chu Nan would die of hunger. The main character excitedly shouted to his friend that he had not said everything yet and that he should not hang up. At the end of the conversation, Chu Nan thought with sadness that he would have to live as he lived. The next day, Chu Nan received a call and was summoned to the company office for an important conversation. The guy was sitting at the table, sitting opposite him were Meng Meng and Ming Shui, he asked them why they called him. Men Men, with a voice full of seriousness, asked him if he would like to work in their company. The guy was surprised by this proposal, Men Men indicated that most of the positions in the company have been replaced by their own people, including the security department. Men Men added that although this position is not important, the security department is responsible for the security of the entire company, now that the manager of this case has been replaced, Ming Shui's safety has become at risk. Ming Shui told the guy that she understands that this proposal is not very appropriate for him since he has another job, she said she hoped he would consider the offer. The main character thought, he understood that extra work would not hurt him, however, he could not immediately agree. The guy clarified what his new job consists of and whether he has five insurances and one housing fund. The next day, Chu Nan came to his new place of work, he opened the door to the security department. Chu Nan greeted everyone and said his name, he added that from this day on he will be the manager of their department. Then the main character noticed that no one was paying attention to him in the office, people worked and were busy with their own affairs. He walked up to the boss's desk, he was just talking to his wife, he told her that he had to go because urgent matters arose. The boss looked at Chu Nan and told him that he thought that Kai Ming would send someone cool. The boss did not take the main character seriously, apparently, he was not happy about the guy's arrival. Then the boss told the whole office that some girl had come to see them, all the people laughed. Chu Nan was annoyed, he expected a different reception, the guy realized that it would not be easy for him here. Chu Nan approached his boss and gave him a folder, he said that this was his inaugural document and asked to read it. The boss asked her the seal of the Ministry of Personnel was, he added that Tsai Ming's signature cannot make a guy a deputy general manager. The guy left the security office, he realized that he needed more additional seals in the personnel department. The main character thought that Tsai Ming was able to partially replace power in the company, now even the security department manager has become impudent. Chu Nan thought to himself that he was able to foresee this, he approached the HR office. The main character cheered himself up with the thought that he knew what he had to do. The guy confidently walked into the office, he immediately went directly to the desk of the head of this department. The head of the HR department asked the guy if he worked in the security department, he also asked Chu Nan why he didn't take the head of the department with him, according to the rules of the HR department, the guy must be accompanied by the head of his department so that all formalities can be resolved. The main character thought to himself that everything that was happening was an attempt to put pressure on him so that he would not get to work. Chu Nan stuck out his folder with documents and said that the security department could wait, he came here to join the deputy head of the human resources department. The boss asked Chu Nan if he was not the deputy head of the security department. The main character explained that due to special circumstances, he was assigned to work simultaneously in two departments, he handed the boss his appointment document and asked him to study it. The guy pointed out that the document had the signatures of Chairman Tsai and Chen and Vice President Tsai Ming. The boss thought to himself that although there was not much work in his department, this was not a reason to give a newcomer such power, at the same time, the Yeronwa branch is headed by Tsai and Cheng as before, the manager decided that if he continued to complicate the guy's life, 
then everything could end very badly. The manager changed his mood and said that there were no problems with the file, he said that he would report Chu Nan to the office. The guy replied that the boss didn't need to do that, he will do it all himself. The guy returned to the security department office, he brought his documents to the boss and said that everything was ready. The boss looked at the documents and asked where the seal was, he added that it was the same paper. The main character asked him to wait a minute, he decided to put his stamp on paper. In front of the amazed boss, the guy put his signature on the paper. After that, the guy took out a seal and confidently affixed his signature to the documents with it. Then he took the documents in his hands, showed them to the boss and said that everything was ready. The boss got very angry, he took the documents with his own hand and threw them aside. He grabbed the guy by the collar and asked him why he had decided to make jokes, he said that this would not solve the problem. Chu Nan realized that the time had come to act, he grabbed the boss's hand with his hand. The main character was able to twist the boss's hand to the side, he didn't have the strength to resist. As a result, the guy threw the head of the security service back onto the chair with all his strength. He was very surprised, but could not understand why the guy who passed by was so strong. The irritated boss thought that he had never lost in strength to anyone. Chu Nan began to explain that he was the manager of the human resources department, for this reason, his seal is valid, this should solve the problem. The boss asked the guy if he really was the deputy head of the human resources department, he didn't believe him. Workers around heard their conversation, they decided that the guy was joking and said some nonsense. The boss told the guy that if his words were really true, he would eat the butt of his cigar. Suddenly the door to the office opened, the head of the personnel department entered, he turned to the head of the security department. The head of the personnel department asked excitedly why the head of the security service did not answer the phone. The head of security said that his colleague arrived on time, he pointed to the main character and said that he said that he was the deputy head of the personnel department. The head of the personnel department said that this is true and the guy is his new deputy. The mood of the people around changed, the head of security immediately became friendly. Chu Nan asked him what he said about the cigar but and said strictly that he was waiting. The main character once again confirmed that the boss should eat the butt of his cigar, she was just burning out in the ashtray. The boss said that he was joking and the seal has no weight at all, he said that he and Chu Nan would be like brothers. The surrounding people approached the main character and said that their manager was just joking. The main character said that he doesn't care whether it's a joke or not, he moved the ashtray closer to the boss. The guy picked up the cigar and poured the ash into the ashtray, he was ready to go to the end. Chu Nan slipped a cigar to the boss and told him to act, the manager was silent. The boss realized that he needed to decide something now, he could not retreat, the people around were silent. The head of the HR department approached the main character from the side and told the guy that he couldn't do that. The main character called the head of the security department named Bao and said that he could not be a windbag. The Bao manager was silent, he cursed himself in his heart for getting into such a situation through his stupidity. There was an oppressive silence, the subordinates of the department were all silent and looked at their boss. Manager Bao made up his mind, he thought he would do it, he confidently brought the cigar to his mouth. At the very last moment, the main character took his hand and grabbed the boss's hand. Chu Nan asked in a cheerful voice whether the boss really bought his words, the guy said he was joking. The surrounding department workers breathed a sigh of relief, they realized that it was all over. The main character took the cigar in his hands and said joyfully that he very rarely jokes. Chu Nan pressed the cigar into the ashtray and extinguished it, he said that if this situation happens again, the main character added that he won't joke anymore, this must have had an effect on those around him. The security department workers were silent and everything that happened struck them very hard. The main character was traveling in a car on business with his companions Ming Shui and Meng Meng. While sitting behind the wheel, the guy asked if he should always follow Ming Shui wherever she goes. Men Men answered him in the affirmative and said that there was no other method to protect her boss. Chu Nan asked what the purpose of the current trip was, the boss replied that they would go to Patriarch Jared, there it will be necessary to agree on the process of project implementation. In the parking lot, a guy noticed a car and Men Men's ex-boyfriend was sitting inside, Chu Nan asked if he had also come to meet him, Ming Yu replied that the current project will be completed by them and the Dao family. Men Men noticed that her ex-boyfriend was nearby, she didn't have the strength to turn her head and look at him. The main character parked his car, he was ready to go to the meeting with his companions. The guy said that he had parked and everyone could get out, Ming Shui told him that Mr. T 
Tao couldn't start his car, she asked Chu Nan to help him. The guy agreed, he had no other choice, he got out of the car and walked across the parking lot to Tao's car. Chu Nan asked Mr. Tao for permission to help him with his car, he was thoughtfully silent. Tao let the guy into the car, he said he doesn't know much about cars, Chu Nan said that it's okay, he will help. After thinking a little, Tao asked the main character why he was here, Chu Nan answered him happily. Chu Nan explained in detail that he recently got a temporary job with Tsai Ming, he will help her do a few trivial tasks. Tao said quietly that he heard that Ming Shui has been extremely tired lately, the main character said that everything was ready with his car. The main character was ready to get out of the car, Tao suddenly grabbed him by the clothes and told him to wait. Tao asked Chu Nan very carefully if he knew Patriarch Jared, the guy replied that he saw it at the auction. Tao moved very close to Chu Nan, he was about to ask something very important. The main character sensed something was wrong, he thought to himself why Tao sprayed himself with perfume so much. Tao, with a penetrating look, asked the main character not to lie to him, Chu Nan thought about his interlocutor, how could it be that he was more beautiful than some women? Tao was already very close to the main character, he told Chu Nan that he had already met Jared once. The girls in the car were worried about the long absence of their drivers and security guard, men men looked out the window. The girl noticed that the guys in the car were sitting very close to each other, she wondered what they were doing there. 